So, in your hour of need, who can save you? Well, Gotham has Batman, Metropolis has Superman, but uh, who does North Wales have? Well, he's the hero that Snowdonia needs but does not deserve. He's a silent guardian, a watchful protector. He is known as Chopper Brian. <laughs> Brian, how are you, sir? <laughs> I hope you didn't find the intro. intro yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm well, John. Thanks. Nice, nice yeah. to see you again this time. It's been a while. Well, it was just um, just to set the scene. Obviously, this is the second uh, episode we're doing now in terms of interviews with contestants of of Total Wipeout, and uh, I think, well, I mean, I've I've known you for about ten years now, but I think it's just you have got so many interesting stories to tell that um, they kept hinting on the show that you know they talked about your mountain rescue stuff and they referred to you as like a real life superhero so the idea of this interview is to get a bit more of well two insights one what your experience was like on the show but also find out a little bit more about the mountain rescue uh side of things you know probably tell us about some rescues you've done and of course in your interview that we'll see coming up you, they also talked about you being a bmx world champion so uh, we're going to go into details about uh about that a bit later so um uh yeah that that's the uh, that's the plan of action for this but i know a few people watching this uh, uh let's just say there's been a lot of questions about wipeout in uh, in the last year or two and uh, your name crops up quite a bit on on youtube in some of the comments and uh in terms of actually i haven't told you this there is one channel that has been listing their top 50 competitors or the top 100 competitors and they judge, they literally are judging everyone on their speed, agility, uh, how quick they were in this round and that <laughs> round. Uh, your name is up near the top end. I think the last one they put together, top 100, you were like 15th or something. They rated you on uh, out of all the hundreds of competitors that have been over the years. So, uh, uh, I'll, but, oh, I'll, no. I'll take, take Actually, no, I think the first one, someone had you at 15th. And then I think the second one, second list out of the top 100, I think you're like ninth or something in there. So, uh, oh, well, top 10, even better. I'll have that. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, I, I was way down the list, by the way. I, I know my place. You know? Did, but, I, did I win the most ginger one as well? <laughs> if they had a comp, if they had one for that, I'm sure you'd be in the running. I, I wouldn't be in, in the running for any of that at all, as you can see. <laughs> nice one. I, I've got a quick question for you, though, John. Did, on. Was it was it my mum that wrote that little intro for you? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Am I getting the money for that, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It was. Um, I had to think of something and it was, I don't know why, I just watched The Dark Knight again recently. And so that was kind of ringing in the back of my head. So uh, I thought, yeah, why not? But, awesome. uh, maybe well I'm saying that because I just, uh, if I want to pop, if I need a room to crash in the next couple of months, I'm trying to bug <laughs> you up so I can get, get free accommodation. No, so well, you know where I am, so you're always welcome. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, so with, um, with Wipeout, actually, I've got to ask you, with the... I tell you what, if we first of all get the um, the image up, because so we're going to go to share screen and some familiar faces for you, if it comes up in a moment, and you can see that now. Yeah, I've got it. Yes, yeah, that's that's the original uh, the original gang. Um, oh, yeah. What made you what made you apply for Wipeout? What was what was the thinking behind it? So okay, that interesting story really in. Uh, at the time, one of my my students uh, at work, uh, one of the pilot students, yeah. who himself was a really good uh, triathlete, actually, yeah. uh, had had mentioned the show and that he was going to apply for it. And uh, you know, why don't I go for it? It should be quite good fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've, I'd seen the show. It hadn't been out that long. Mm. Uh, obviously, knew what it was about. So. I went home, I downloaded the application form, um, which was really quite long. I'm sure you went through the same process uh, and then submitted it. And from kind of flash to bang, really, from submitting yeah. it to having an interview, it was literally a matter of weeks. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously got, got through it and got on the show. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> my friend that actually suggested it to me had done the same process, right. had given the, uh, the forms to his wife to mm -hmm. submit, and yeah. he didn't actually do it. <laughs> What do you mean? He, what, he, he, submitted, what, he didn't bother. He didn't he, fill the application out. Well, he filled the application form out, and there was some something in the process there with his wife, who was meant to send the email or right. post it or whatever. Didn't get round to doing it. Oh. <laughs> he didn't get it. So, uh, and I think it would have been far, 
far stronger competitor than I ever was. So, uh, oh my goodness yeah, me. he was a bit gutted in the end, I think, yeah. when I got on and he didn't. Now, I'm, something I'm curious about, with the application for you, was it one that you had to print off and send it in the post, or could you fill it out online? I'm trying to think back now, Carl, it was like yeah. 10 years ago. It was certainly filling it out online, but it was gathering info from here, yeah. there, and everywhere, about, you know, bits about your history, photographs, yeah. and it's and i'm i'm pretty sure it's an online application i'm it, not yeah, it must have and, been they, uh, yeah what happened for my series is a bit prehistoric then because it was literally you had to print off the form and post it and uh, actually that, no there you are yeah oh. no you just reminded me it was it was filling it out online printed it off and then sent it and that's why his application didn't get sent his wife forgot to post it i think, right. I think that, yeah, that kind of rings about true now yeah, yeah so yeah now, unfortunately for him yeah, because I found that from the point of the audition, I think from the audition to getting the phone call saying you're on the shortlist, for me, that was about three or four weeks, I think. And then when they confirmed me, that was like two and a half weeks notice to actually going out there. Was it Was it a similar yeah, time for you? Yeah, very similar time. I was really yeah. surprised, actually. And yeah. uh, certainly given, uh, you know, at the time I was serving in the military and uh, right. Argentina being the, you know, the destination of where we're going, yeah. it kind of threw up potentially some issues for me. So I... Uh, yeah, managed to resolve that quite quickly. I was really surprised that, that you know, there was very short notice, you know, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, didn't give you a lot of time to sort of think about it too much. No, that's the thing. It all it all happened so rapidly. And did you find that once they confirmed you, you were getting phone calls every single day leading up to you going out there? It was, it was, it seemed to be just like one after the other. They were asking every single question imaginable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, all bits and bobs to fill in, you know, with sort yeah. of security vetting forms and, and, and yeah. what have you, you know. Obviously, the details of where you're going to meet up, and yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I was really surprised because I would have thought that uh, for something like that, packing you out over there would, you know, it'd be a couple of months lead into it or something, yeah. you know, and doing some various checks on you. But uh, yeah, it was really quite a quick process, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I got to ask now because obviously, in terms of meeting everyone, that was all at Heathrow. Uh, was it? Yeah, it was Heathrow Terminal Five, wasn't it? I believe. No, Gatwick. Gatwick. Oh, Gatwick. Oh, right. Okay down to Gatwick and uh, flew out of there straight direct to uh, Buenos Aires. Right. And uh, yeah, so it, nobody had met each other um, yeah. and, until you're all, all given a, a, a place to meet and a time. That's it, uh, yeah. And then it soon became that that group was going to be, you yeah. know, the group that you're with and, uh, you know, the rest is history. Really. You know, well, it's, suppose, uh, yeah, because you didn't know who to look for as such. I suppose you had details on your notes saying this is where you're going to meet everyone and like who do I look for type thing was it yeah no I was sat uh, and I'm sure you were you sat, sat in the coffee bar waiting for the, yeah. the time and you know and I was aware of this group starting to gather with sort of various yeah. characters and yeah. uh, um, they're sitting having a coffee and uh, looking at this group slowly getting larger thinking god there's some interesting characters over there yeah. <laughs> and then uh, then you, you know you hear chip it uh, words that are said and you hear why Pat mentioned and I said oh that must be my group so I went yeah. over and introduced myself and yeah, uh, yeah it, it turned out we, I mean we had I'm sure you did we had such a great group of people on on the show we Brilliant. all got along instantly you know yeah. and it was just absolute ball you know so much so that we've stayed in touch many of us over yeah. the years anyway you know it's you know you were put together for a few days um yeah. for at most for most of us you know but then from that because we were so so, you know, like-minded i guess mm. and uh, just had such a good time we, we've stayed really good friends you know years after that, that's the nice thing with this it, it's amazed me because i was never too sure whether people would stay in contact i mean there's a few people you sort of lose touch with i mean that that goes with the flow but i'm amazed at how many of us you know even from my show of how many of us have stayed in touch over the years because i suppose we're together 24 7 for a you know for like one or two weeks and it's just that's quite a long time when you consider when you normally see people for like, you know, the odd hour or so here and there meeting for coffee. This is, it's quite an intense um, sort of meeting up as it were, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. But I, I think, you know, as I was discussing to you earlier, that uh, one thing that came through with the group, and I think certainly in the, what the, the film crew were looking for in the selection process is, is that attitude that everyone had. Yeah. Everyone had the similar attitude to life. Everyone was out there for, you yeah. know, to have a good time. Yeah. Uh, but there was that determination within anyone yeah. with all of us to, to really have a good go at the course and and yeah. I think having that instant connection 
at that level of you mm. know the, w- the way you approach life and what you're there for yeah then sort of breaks any barrier down you know and you can instantly connect with people and you know it doesn't matter you know yeah. wh- where you're from what you do you know uh, yeah. you've got a similar sort of outlook on life then you, you're, you're all going to get on well aren't you? and yeah. uh, as it was we did yeah, which it was just a huge obviously it was a huge bonus i'm sort of curious i I don't know if it was the same for you, but I found having watched it on TV to then when the, the, the coach goes from the hotel to the thing, when you first start seeing the course on set, what was your first impression when you start seeing bits of the course and everything like that? Because it's sort of like, this is real. This is really happening. Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing sight, isn't it? Because, mm. uh, I mean, there was, I, I can remember there being two complete wipeout sets. That's right. Um, yep. That's up there, you know. You, you know, you, mm. you, you flip flop between the courses. Yeah. Uh, there was also a, a Russian game show and a German game show being filmed there as well. Oh, was it? Oh, that's new. Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. Uh, there's a whole lot going on. It's a really big site. You know, there was like, yeah. you know, everyone had that idea that it was filmed out in Argentina because of health and safety reasons, yeah. and uh, you know, they wouldn't allow it to happen in the UK. You know, uh, not the case. You know, it, it was just. A complete setup for Endemol there with, with other yeah. game shows in process and it was just easier to, to fly people out and in fact on the health and safety side I turned up there with um, actually with an ankle injury I'd been in a, a climbing competition just a little fun competition yeah. the week before and I twisted my ankle right and um, they weren't going to let me go actually and do the qualifier at first really? until the doctor on site had, uh, yeah it was uh, I'd mentioned it to them I said well we can't let you go yeah. on the set and we have had a medical with our doctors right. uh, on there so as it turned out when everyone was filming their first run mm. um, I was actually last in the in the whole load of people to go and do that because I, I was at the back having a medic proving right. that I could actually sort of jump up and down on my ankle without too much pain yeah oh god yeah because am I right your running order would have been obviously on set you do all the photos interviews with Amanda first and everything isn't it like 10 of you run in the morning have some lunch and then the, the last 10 in the afternoon so if you were last to go that would have been around four in the afternoon or so that you would have oh, it was uh yeah it was a it was a, a long day really and yeah. uh, you know all those little, I, I don't know the technical name for it all the little bits where they clip you in spinning around on things and pointing That's at it. cameras yeah yeah that rota- yeah yeah you know, it was on all day you know you, yeah. you're doing half a morning of doing that on a yeah. rotating platform pointing and looking over your shoulders and bits and bobs and uh and then the the second half of the day, as you said, you know, this split us up into two groups and we then did the qualifier. So I was I was the last to run uh, on oh, the that first day. Long run. day. Because am I right that from what I remember, once you've the people who've run the qualifier, they're not allowed to talk with those who haven't run it. So those of you you meet in the tent initially. So you were basically yeah. having to stick around in the tent for hours and hours, really. And the group of people was getting smaller and smaller for you as they all congregated outside and they could talk amongst themselves. Exactly, yeah. So nobody has got you know a clue of how anybody else has done on the That's course it. until That's you've it. done it and you're meeting yeah. up at the end right you're so isolated there and certainly i'm sure we'll talk about it later but in, even yeah. in the wipeout zone you know you 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 know in that case you had uh they put um ear, ear defenders on us and played music to us so we couldn't even hear i've got a the, story for you about the headphones as well i'll tell I'll tell you later <laughs> Right. Um, but the, the, the only thing I can remember is hearing and what you don't see on the show or hear on the show is the um, uh, the punch bag wall. Um, yeah. As, as you're putting up to arms, it, as it were. Hydraulic arms, the noise that machine makes, you can hear it right there across the other end of the field when you're in the isolation tent. Right. Um, of course, you don't hear that on the show, but it's just a, a whole series of pistons going off and... Uh, yeah yeah just added another dimension to running up to that wall and uh <laughs> the noise it was making I, i'm curious as now for your show did you find that when you started the course of course mind you because you were on a different set you're on a much higher platform when you did yours they, it was only when i was coming up to the sucker punch wall then they switched it on so it was all quiet on set and then as i was running toward the sucker punch wall then i hear these pistons you know these hydraulic arms sort of going <laughs> yeah and then the, as yeah, I got they, past they, it it all switched off again and then when i yeah, went up to the balls it was like silence everywhere you couldn't hear a thing yeah, that's exactly the same. Yeah, so it kind of takes you a bit by surprise with this, yeah. uh, of, I don't know, huge, you know, this violent animal about to <laughs> smack it. you in the face. So, yeah, that's it. I, I got to ask, because I'm assuming, yeah, the interview that you did with Amanda, that would have been in the morning, was it? Because when you were doing all the press, the promo shots and everything, was she interviewing you all one by one or? Yeah, she was. She, so we did all those uh, bits with her. Then we yeah. did the bits on the podiums that are spinning and yeah. uh Everything they needed to do to, you know, for the fill-in uh, sort of clips, I guess, yeah. took place in the 
running for us, and then That's we did right, the yeah. uh, the run in the afternoon. And you did the run in the afternoon. What what was your impressions of Amanda? Because isn't obviously you see her on screen, and then when you meet her, she seems to know everything about you, which is not what you associate when you see someone on TV. You don't expect them to know you, sort of thing. Yeah. Was... No, I mean, I mean, genuinely, and, and one thing that came across, and I, I, you know, it was really obvious that uh, people like that they they take ownership of the show. Mm. You know, it's like they're so proud of their show, they yeah. want to make it their own and put their stamp on it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they do their homework, you know, it's not like yeah. you're any great yeah. superstar or whatever, but they, yeah. they're certainly, you know, friendly, they welcome you That's there, it. they know a bit about you. And uh, yeah, but it is quite obvious that they're really proud that that's their show and they want yeah. it to be presented as, as, as well as, you know, as, as they can do. And uh, yeah, I mean, you even see it to a point with um, Richard Hammond, you know, yeah. when they do one of their, sort of, uh, I think it was across South America, one of their trips there and they painted, oh, yeah. The usual phrases on the car, and he was advertising his, you know, the wipeout show as well. So yeah. you know, they've got ownership of the show. That it's like their show. They That's wanted it, to make yeah. it, uh, and yeah. Now, because um, I, I must say, the thing that always impressed me with her was how quick I knew that when I was chatting to her, that she was gonna. I, I knew she was kind of gearing up to the put down sort of thing. You get, you kind of sort of. I could sense it was coming, so I was trying to prepare myself for that, so that I wouldn't see. I wouldn't be like a rabbit in the headlights, like. <laughs> didn't, didn't know yeah. the answer sort of thing so um she's I mean, it's quite quick. interesting she's quick. quite interesting the edit you know you could, obviously you don't see uh what name they're going to give you or That's how it, you're yeah. going to come across in the final edit until it gets aired yeah so uh, of course for those weeks after you've done the show you're just thinking now yeah, what did i say yeah. what did i do you know, you know quite clearly there's some people there that will just go and do anything and say anything and yeah. uh, leave themselves open a, a little bit but what is quite clever I think is uh, when you've and I don't know whether it was the same with your show but some of the comments in the commentary that were made in the mm. obviously you know the edit after you've left yeah if you were there on set with those those people you go oh yeah I know I know exactly what you mean by that you know it it, it would come across as just a general comment yeah to you know people that weren't there didn't know the characters but there's the odd sort of uh, banterish sort of comment goes out. And go, yeah, I know where you're coming from with that, and you know, I don't ask you for any specific examples. No, no, but, I don't, uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, when you watch it, having been there, you take a, a very different take on um, on the, the show. show After you've <laughs> so, been on there and you've seen how it operates, you view the show differently to when you just watch it on TV, don't you? That's what. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. You see all the bits in the background that uh, yeah. you know that you wouldn't probably notice, um, you know, if you were just watching the show, um, yeah. having not been. Yeah. So did you um so before you went out there, because at this point only series one and two had aired at that point. Because like for me, I was watching series one as much as possible, <laughs> trying to get an idea of what to do. Were you doing the same trying to watch series one and two to try and get a, a bit of a heads up as to what to expect for it? I'm, I'm gonna say no on that. Okay, um, that's yeah. The reason the reasons that I mentioned earlier, it wasn't uh, you know, it was a friend of mine that came up to work mm -hmm. and mentioned it to me, and it was such a quick turnaround from mm -hmm. applying. Uh, yeah. to actually going there that I didn't really have a great deal of time. Yeah, I mean, I tried to watch it a bit before I went, yeah. but I didn't really study anything, you know. Um, yeah, I think this is the course, the the, Yeah, the, the course kind of changes every time you go out there yeah. anyway, but yeah, you had a, a rough idea what went on. But yeah, uh, yeah um, like I say, it was like from getting the phone call you're on the show to being out there, it was literally just a few weeks. Yeah. You know? Well, I, yeah, I think for me it was after the, the audition was like in the March, I think it was the end of March, early April, I was told I was on the shortlist. Then they confirmed me about a week later. And then it was like two and a half weeks I was being flown out there. Um, so yeah, at that point I was trying to do, they thought I was completely insane. I was trying to mimic some of the games in the gym. I was setting up like medicine balls, like the red balls and all this sort of stuff. I was getting some very funny looks in the gym. <laughs> trying not to get injured at the same time, but um yeah, it was. Just, uh, I think I started to realise. I thought everyone did that, and of course you're you're backing up the view that basically hardly anyone did that. And I was just like the uh, the little token <laughs> geek that was part of it. I was like, oh, oh no. Yeah, I think I was, I was definitely one of those people that just are uh, going to turn up, have yeah. a bit of fun, yeah. and see where this, you know, not take it too seriously. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and, and no, just see I what happens. Yeah, I would say it was. I wanted, you know, like you said at the start, everyone wanted to give it their best shots, sort of thing. I, I yeah. guess that's the. The frame of mind I was in, I was just petrified of not being able to start the course. I thought I'd go down the ramp 
and then find I'm stuck there for the rest of the time. And then that's me, me done. I was having nightmares about that. So it was, I was practicing all these bits thinking like, you know, please just let me just get through the, the course. And it was just, I just literally just took it a bit at a time as it were, but um, right. Yeah. yeah. It, okay. It's funny I... looking back on the whole thing now. It's, I can't believe it was, I can't believe it was over 10 years ago now, but yeah. Oh, it's a long time ago, isn't it? And, no. you know, I look back and uh, this was pre-me getting into triathlons when, in fact, the, yes. the, you know, the money you were going to help me get into that. But yeah. I, I could barely swim for toffee. You know, and, you know mm. I, I mean, I was so bad at swimming. I swam depths, not lengths at that stage. Right. And I look at when I'm in the water and swimming, thinking, oh, my God, that's terrible technique. So, yeah. And I spent a lot of time in the water swimming as well. So. Oh, do you know what? I, that's what I found with me. When I fell in, I seemingly lost so much time when I fell in the water to swim into the next obstacle and carry it on. I was just... Yeah um that's why it got edited out at the end but at the very end when they said you've won what are you going to spend the money on uh, i just, well, the first words that came out of my mouth was i said i think i need swimming lessons because my swimming was rubbish wouldn't it <laughs> that got edited out afterwards so um actually i'll tell you what should we run should we watch your first run through just to because if people haven't watched it in a while just a bit of a, a refresher and if, if you want to talk us through bits you remember just just feel free so let's go to yeah. this now okay yeah Gonna have to unmute this. <laughs> Hold on, let's go back to the start. Time for a real life hero. <laughs> I'm in a proper hero. It's Brian, an air sea rescue chopper pilot. There you go. And there's three hours of spinning around on that uh, little top thing for the a five oh, second. Can we pause that second. What are you saying? I say the, the amount of times you span around on that little platform yeah. there, the camera guess... shot, and then and they, they get a five second clip out of it. Yeah, <laughs> they've been on there twenty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I um I, once I would they were spinning the one on the the champ show the motor had broken on it so they were manually a guy underneath was really? <laughs> spinning it around and I started to get really dizzy and I just fell off the thing yeah. and the bit of me falling off they put that in the uh, in the yeah the people on ours were just falling off left right and centre oh right oh, so it wasn't just me then yeah. Yeah, no, not just you yeah so. oh good oh that's okay I'll tell you okay let's, let's, oops uh, let's see if I can rewind this okay let's go back up this is the joys of trying to uh, do technology on the fly and let's go again time, time for a real life hero <laughs> I'm in a proper hero it's Brian an air sea rescue chopper pilot so all I found is all about balance and speed in, in my eyes do you tick any of those boxes I'm the former BMX freestyle world champion huh <laughs> yeah we'll pretend we didn't hear that Brian and Brian's got his mates to drop him off. Cool. They'll be standing by should anything go wrong. I've been rescuing people for 15 years. I'm not cashing any favours to be rescued on this course today. Right, so that only was... Mildly, your... yeah, yeah, only on. mildly embarrassing when you watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny watching it back. I've got to ask you, you know the, you know the graphics they put into the helicopter and it looks like you're yeah. getting winched in? Did they tell you to do some sort of enact in some sort of scene and then they edited it in or what? No, not at all. That was completely, you know, just coincidental, I think, for right. And they, they managed to link it on. But uh, yeah. you notice then I, I I went for the yellow t shirt with the yellow search and rescue background. That's that's ah, the reason why. Right, I okay, it. yeah. So uh, but interestingly, having looked at that uh, that clip because it's been some years since I've seen yeah. it, the actual aircraft they've used on that clip yeah. is actually the aircraft type I'm flying now. So, uh, no so right. I've just, just realised that uh, looking yeah. at that clip there. But uh, no at the time when this was being filmed, I was flying yeah. something um, yeah. you know completely different. So I've just realised as well we were wearing the same colour t-shirts for our original shows because I was in yellow because uh, I had to stick with yeah um, I decided to pick yellow for the first one and I had to wear that all the way uh, all the way through because they just told us wear basic colours, didn't they? Nothing. Yeah, no basic colours. No no branding. You know, That's bring it. three sets of them. You know, because you're going to get That's dirty. It. Yeah, because they're going to get messed up. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so three sets of that. And then said there was always a possibility of staying on for a champ show. Yeah. So they got everyone to bring two sets of three sets of everything. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah, a bit of a quite shopping a big, trip. Uh, quite a big luggage bag to uh, to take with you then. That's it, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, just chuck them in the bin afterwards. So it was, uh, I think it was, it was a quick trip down to Asda to find a T-shirt that uh, <laughs> yeah. I could wrap. So actually, you've just read before we're gonna. The next clip is obviously if you run in the course. I am curious. You know, with your shout out, did you get that done mm. on your first take, or did you need a couple of takes to do it? No, first take. Oh, well um, done. Yeah. I, I was going to say something like I don't know. At the time, we had this banterish thing going around about something to do with ginger hair, anyway. And, I, uh, yeah. the, and at the last minute, they went well. 
no, could you, could you try something else? I was like, oh, geez. So I literally just round the corner, you know, we, yeah. we had to walk around thinking, what am I going to say? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought of something I said to them. They said, yeah, that, that'd be fine. Yeah. So, uh, so th that's where that came from anyway. That so was there behind, because they had you hold it, because that was like at the top of the sort of hill. And it wasn't it like behind the hill, there would be like three or four of you waiting there and you go up one by one to. Yeah, that's right. There were some sport pitches out the back. In fact, there were some uh, local school sports day going on behind oh, the back okay. of that hill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We walked, so you you yeah. wandered up the hill, and yeah. uh, you know prior to that they'd walked you around the course just to yeah. show you it, but you weren't allowed anywhere near it or on the obstacle. Just it. like you can't well, touch you're going to go from here to there. This yeah. might wobble, that might wobble, but you're not yeah. allowed to see which one does. You know, um, and then round yeah, past the uh, you know, the sucker punch and then the, the yeah. um, balls. But one thing I did notice on the balls was um, that they're all at different heights, which yeah. I hadn't really. Yeah, they go lower that. and lower, don't so, they? Yeah, so when you were stood on, on the top, you see them slowly getting lower in front of you. So, yeah. you know, if you had some momentum, you, you could go across on there. And then, yeah. uh, then obviously, we had the uh, the rings to go across on this particular show. And uh, have a look at it. Yeah. yeah. And, and what, the, yeah, well, I, I think the advice they were giving us is, right, what you've got to do is go as hard and as quick as you can. Yeah. And like, okay. <laughs> that to me doesn't sound like the, the best way to get across this course, but I see where you're coming from. Yeah. You want to make it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, they're basically so, saying, please fall over. <laughs> please fall over. I said, yeah, there's a clue in the name, so just go for it. Yeah, exactly, so, yeah. Yeah, there was yeah. this one panel show, and um, it was uh, it was after Series 2, and they clipped uh, one of our episodes, and this one guy, I think it was Ben Miller, and I think he said, it's a group of people who have to completely overstate their prowess, and it's like watching them go into a human mousetrap. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> yeah. It's like every obstacle is there to trip us up, isn't it? It's to make us... Like yeah, all over. I say there's a good name. If you if you just went across every obstacle without falling in, it wouldn't make such a good no, show. No, it wouldn't. No, yeah, it's the, it's the falling over that makes it. But but I, I, yeah, I don't know whether you felt whether you felt this, but watching it on the telly and then actually going on the obstacles when you're there, they just seem so much bigger. You know, yeah. the things spin so much quicker than it looks on the yeah. telly. You know, and uh, you don't get a real appreciation. I, I guess that's uh, you know. Um, with most sports or yeah. whatever you look at, you go and watch it in real life, it, you get a different take on it. It's very definitely the, the take on this show that, uh, yeah, it looks a lot tamer on the telly than it did in real life. I've, something I'm really curious about on this now, because you've done a lot of sports and competing prior to this, right? Mm. And so you're used to that competitive environment. So you yes. kind of know what to expect. When you're stood at the top of the course, was that nerve wracking for you at all, or were you fairly calm and just no? I'm just going to get on with this. Uh, how did you find that? I can't think the, the same for everyone that goes up there. You know, you're you know you're ready to give it a go. You've got yeah. no idea how anybody else has done. Yeah. You know, you're there to have some fun. Exactly. You are. Yeah. But but you know, at the end of the day, there's still there's ten grand at exactly, stake. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so there, there, there's that little edge going through. You're thinking, yeah. You know what would be really handy. You know, and. Uh, so yeah, that, that kind of drives you on, doesn't yeah. it? Of course it does. Because I was, uh, I've, I've found all the rowing races and running races I've done over the years, I've never been as nervous as I was stood at the top of the course because it's like you can see all the cast and crew, you know, around and like everyone's staring at you and there's, you could hear yeah. a pin drop on the course because all the contestants are all tucked away in the tent and it's just suddenly all the attention's on you and we're like, oh, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, no, I, just sort of I guess it was excitement more than, I mean, the most nervous thing I've, I've ever been uh, sort of involved with is, is bobsleighing. You know, I mean, you're so know. nervous, you're almost <laughs> physically sick before you set off down the course. You know, yeah. at uh, Ben 15 at La Plan, I saw the end of my bobsleigh career. You know, with a, with right. a really bad crash there. But uh, you know, so it wasn't that sort of nervous. But it, yeah. you know, of course, you're going to be slightly nervous because people are watching you. There's cameras. Yeah. You're going to going to be on the telly. You don't want to make Got too it. much of a fool of yourself, and yeah, uh, you know, just just give it your best. Yeah, because I remember at the time, I know when. After I'd gone down the ramp and about to start the first obstacle, my thought was, well, no matter what happens, it'll just, if I mess this up, at least it's only on TV once and then that's the end of it. I had no yeah. idea that then it was going to go on to BBC iPlayer and Challenge TV. I didn't know this was going to be talked to. I didn't know it was going to be one of those shows. It's, it's only on TV once and a few million people will make you look good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> make yeah. you fool yourself. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Know, what's a few million people laughing at you? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So... But right. I, I kind of think though that was one of those character traits though, of everyone there. You know, everyone knew what you were getting yourself into. Exactly, knew that yeah. you, you know 
you can have a laugh at yourself. Of course you can. You know, life's too point. If you and I think the auditions kind of helped highlight that. If you were like really serious and took yourself too seriously, you were never gonna, you know, do, no, do well. Exactly. At it. It's all about people who are willing to laugh at themselves because you've got to. As much as you want to do as I mean, you know, you and I are kind of instinctively competitive in what we do anyway, but you still want to just enjoy it, you know, because this is like a sure. one-shot deal. I mean, so many you think of all the people that would love to do the course, and yet we were actually given this chance to uh you know to Oh yeah, yeah. Course. I mean it's one of those things if ever you won the lottery, you know. You would build one of these courses in your yes. back garden, having, yes. having been on it. You know, <laughs> be one of those things for you know a great yeah. party we used to have, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh god, yeah. I'd I'd love to have a go at the red balls again. Now I think this is okay. All right, this is your yeah, run. See what the RAF is like on the ground as he heads down to the Super Walk of Shame. Whoa, that that is good. That was work. just sheer speed on that. I couldn't believe it. And sheer luck. <laughs> Edging along, oh, miss it. dips a foot in the mud, maybe just checking the temperature, but he's, he's undeterred. This is brave stuff, and he's across. What a hero! Brian sprints towards the big red balls. I'm expecting something good. One, should kind of two. Yes, he's on, he's on. Yet three. This now, is this bit. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, foot oh. slips. Oh. The one foot that got went. And into then, the mud. The you need to bring your ball. knee generally, you need to bring your knee up, uh, two no, hands, no, one knee on the ball, no, and no, you and I both no, went the same state no, on our no, stomach no, and bounced. Yeah, now what, what I was trying to do there, the one the one little show that I did see before we went was um, one of the previous shows. Now you, you're more of an expert than I am, but there's a, a boxer, I think, and he kind of double double skipped across each one. Oh, and, uh, uh, you, mean, uh, you mean Chris from my series, Knockout Chris? Oh, is that was? I'm, I'm not sure, but he got across uh, the top, did and he, I thought... Did he run the balls uh, at full speeds? Yes, that's right. Chris, he that guy's right. amazing, yeah. Yeah, so and so that looked like a, a, a way to go. And mm. uh, I used to triple jump years ago as well, as one, right. of, the, one of the sports I've done. Yeah. So I thought I'll, I'll try and sort of do that sort of technique and yeah. bounce off the top. Um, Obviously, it didn't work too well, but no, uh, you know, you know what? The, the only thing is, it was, it was literally luck that I ended up on that third ball, and then I went to sort of bunny hop across, if you like. Yeah. But the the foot that I'd stuck in the mud on yeah. the sucker punch just slipped, and I had got yeah. no forward traction at all. So I that did was the end of it. When you've got the mud all over, you've got no traction on anything, have you? Uh, like you, you just slide off everything. Exactly. I was just just lucky. I still have my shoes left on my foot because I think there's yeah. a, a few thousand shoes at the bottom of that pit <laughs> you, you heard them say about that there are quite a few shoes that were left in there and uh, yeah, in yeah they, i can they, believe it yeah but that because that whole course that got demolished in like 2012 and it's now a housing estate there so can you imagine how many old sets of trainers are probably in the foundations there <laughs> yeah <laughs> some wobbly foundations there somewhere yeah. <laughs> no, exactly yeah but, or smelly uh, yeah yeah <laughs> i'll tell you what i do wonder with the uh the balls is that because i had the same idea i mean a low uh, Chris hadn't run the balls at that point. I had it in my mind that I wanted to do two steps on each ball and just go from one to the other. But yeah, that, that, that was kind of the, that's what you thought. That was kind of yeah, that was kind of the thing. It's sort of like a, a light skip on the top. But I, again, you've got no no feel for how you springy how, they are or no. how much tension there is in them. And and I think that was obvious as well during the day because the the pressure in the balls would be slightly different as you saw them. And right. I think after they'd filmed, obviously they, they didn't bother charging them up and keep and right. they would deflate as they went on. But uh, but yeah, it was you know you didn't stand a chance really. If anybody ever says that uh, they, they tried a technique and they knew how to do it, then uh, they're kind of you know <laughs> not telling the full truth there. I think because there's a whole lot of luck with getting on there just where it's going to spring you. The you thing know. that sh the thing that caught me out was after on the first ball. I didn't expect that my feet would sink into the ball so much. And that's kind of like what threw me into the second ball. And I fell, nearly fell off. I corrected myself. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have to do one at a time. And by that yeah. point, I'm thinking to myself, oh, God, I wanted to run them fully. And now this is rubbish. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking about the fourth ball. And then I just bounced and fell straight in. And it was, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's all about those balls, really. Anybody that remembers anything about yeah. Total Wipeout, the first thing they'll say to you is, which ball did you get to? You yeah, know, exactly. yeah. It, it was the iconic uh, yeah. uh, feature on the obstacle course, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, no, absolutely. So, of course, you what you said earlier is kind of the next question I was going to ask you was that Let's when you, oops, you know, we've already done that, this was your result at the end of the qualifier. And of course, because you said you were the last to go, so you hadn't, you didn't know where you were going to place. 
148 was your time. How did it feel to you? Did it feel like it was sub two minute or did you think you were over? Did it feel slower or faster than what you did? Well, you know what? I really don't know because you had no idea of how quick yeah. anybody was. And then and you don't really see how quick they were until you they air the yeah. show just like anybody exactly. else. And, yeah. And, you know, I saw Sean's go and, it, you know, when you watch it on the show, it just blows you away how quick it was across there, you know. So, you know, and then you see, you know, the way they edited the show and listed it was, wasn't yeah. obviously in the order that we ran. So it's all... Mm. Yeah, they do. To, they do um, mix them up. Generate the interest bit. there. But, um, uh, yeah, so no, I, I just, I thought it was, it felt okay. Yeah. You know, I felt I got across the course all right. I didn't end up in, in too much in the mud. So I thought, no. you know, I'm probably in with a chance. And of course, all you've got to do is you're aiming to make the top 12, aren't you? Yeah, so exactly. whether you're the final or not it doesn't you know does it really matter too much yeah everyone yeah, likes to be the quickest yeah. but the aim the aim is to get through to round two which of yeah. course is day um yeah yeah so yeah, I, was, I was pretty happy with it do you, do you remember do you remember this when after you were all sort of rounded up andy norgate would have his clipboard and he'd be reading out the results one after the other of who would who would qualify oh, so the, yeah i do actually i do because this was your because all i remember is that when production sends the photos around they generally try to capture the reaction of everyone as their name is being read out so at this point this was right third place brian 148 so everyone sort of applauds then they would go to the next person and they were reading them out one by one so yeah you do yeah, you yeah, remember, I remember now yeah 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 but where did you get that photo from then uh, that was i think that may have been in uh, i hope it's okay i think it was in Gemma's photo album because what they oh, okay. with, each, with each show um they yeah. generally send all the production photos they send to one person and then it's up to them to share it around. And so right. all that happened, when I was trying to find photos of this, I thought, well, because I know quite a few from your show, I was just checking their photo albums one by one and trying to piece together to see what I could uh, see what I could find. So Gemma, if you're watching this, I hope this is okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> if not, you can tell me off later. I'm sure she'll be fine. Yeah, yeah brilliant. So, um, I oh, great, yeah, nice, yeah, so, good memory. Because obviously that was the end of day one and then Crash Mountain and everything, that was on the, the following day for you, wasn't it? Yeah, so yeah. All, all of the other rounds now, uh, yeah. you know, on day two. And, yeah. and, you know, there's a bit of a story behind the how long the day was for hours because we almost didn't get the filming in. It was oh. gone midnight. It was gone midnight before I did my run the next day on in the uh, wipeout zone because there was a really? horrendous... Yeah, there was a horrendous thunderstorm came through and oh it literally God. took us... Because obviously you've got to wait for it to get dark. Yeah. Uh, uh, before we start filming so they set the first uh, contestant off and then there was a delay because of thunder and lightning risk oh and God, right. literally you're sitting in that tent for two and a half hours maybe three hours um you know in, about this? to get yeah, that it's more yeah, about eight thirty nine o'clock sort of time they film it yeah, it was a yeah, it was uh, it was a long old day because of course you do your, your individual rounds then. So for us yeah. in almost Crash Mountain, and then we went on to Dreadmill, and then yeah. we went on to you know the Wipeout Zone. Yeah. Um, so you do those bits, and then the guys that haven't got through while they you're doing additional sort of interviews, yeah. and they're they're setting up you know the relevant set for the next round then the guys that weren't that hadn't qualified would get bossed off to go shopping somewhere you know That's and right. of course this is where yeah. I, I, I suppose this is the caliber of person you are you never experienced that side of thing but uh, some of us did <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i was, I was lucky uh, lucky i suppose that i had to spend uh, you know yeah. sort of four days hanging around the set with the two shows but uh, exactly. yeah. yeah good enough you know you got to got chatting to people it was yeah, yeah this it was, lovely. was um because I, I remember, yeah, for the uh, for the champ show, when obviously a bunch of us got knocked out on the sweeper and then the last couple on Dizzy Dummies, it was then those of us that were still there, we got uh, sent on a coach and it was just somewhere sort of in town, you know, down by the sea, you know, um, uh, or but oh, what do you call it? Like the docks, you know, that sort of harbour side, whatever. But we were just yeah. grabbing a few bits and it was just the fact that we felt like, yeah, we're, we're the losers now. <laughs> <laughs> we got to watch no. the new guys in action, yeah. But, but you know what, as I was saying to you earlier, that everybody on that show, everybody's a winner, you know, because oh, yeah. everybody, yeah. everyone gets a great trip mm. out to Argentina to go and play on that course. You know, yeah. so the fact that, you know, you come away with a win and some money in your back yeah. pocket is just just a bonus, isn't it? But, you know, it you've is, made yeah. some great friends. You've had a great trip, you know, so just I getting on the show is a win, really. It is. I, I think that's what I found. Uh, chatting 
you know, over the years, a few of us have said it doesn't really matter what position we we get. You know, we make little jokes about it. Oh, we could have done this, we could have done that. But ultimately, it's about well, we were actually a part of it. You know, we got we got yeah, to do it. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. That that's the win, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, without doubt, without yeah. doubt. So when it came to uh, Crash Mountain, were you going out there thinking it would probably be sweeper, or were you wondering if they were going to switch it up a bit? Because you'd seen sweeper for the first couple. I had absolutely no idea. Yeah. You know, no idea at all what it was yeah. going to be. And uh, you know, as you know, that you know, even within the um, even within the series, they they mix the uh, the rounds up anyway with different yeah. obstacles, don't they? So uh, right. no, it was, uh, as it turned out, I mean, Crash Mountain just just suited me down to the ground in both yeah. the shows. It kind of I paid did. to my strengths. I as I used to the sprint. made for you, wasn't it? Well, it was. It just worked so well with um, you know a sprinting background. So you just yeah. had to have that quick power off off the podium yeah. and i kind of worked out with the rotation of the arm that right. if you ran straight onto the arm then obviously it's going in one direction laterally to you you're just going to go off it so you kind of got to run to where where the lead, where the arm isn't you know run to the blank blank spot in in the direction of its if rotation coming around you're effectively you have to jump aiming for this point and then by the time you land it this thing will come in place and then you go is that what you mean that yeah, well, you're kind of jumping onto the the platform, obviously, as it comes past you. Yeah. But because it's rotating one way, you're yeah. running in the direction that it's rotating, rather than yeah, straight across straight, the platform. Yeah, of course. If you run uh, straight, it, it could just be a straight off. Yeah. yeah. So you're kind of like taking the angle out of the yeah. out of the rotation, and then yeah. the platform is always under your feet. Yeah. You know that alongside with just having to be on the right podium with the two sweeper arms that yeah. give you that opportunity to go. You yeah. know because the temptation is with everyone on on that and i'll tell you a nice little story actually about the start of our one in right. a minute that you can just make out if you watch the show um but i'll tell you that in a second but uh, yeah so everyone's like obviously you want to get across as quick as you can and it starts off super quick the arm right. but it gradually does slow down okay. uh, as you go so it's just waiting for that opportunity and not being too hasty yeah and then i think as soon as you saw the first person go across and get knocked off into the water, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, just, you know, less haste, more speed yeah. is the way it headed on. Everyone went down in their first go, and then luckily right. the second go, I, I got across. Right. Um, but if you look at the start of our round mm -hmm. on this um, old holy, holy moly Alex. Oh, that's um, it, yeah, Alex, yeah. He was there, God love him. He was on the far podium there, and uh, shout across to you now. are you already and you shout everyone you know, no whatever yeah. whatever we said and at that very moment she was amanda was counting out three two one yeah this bee flew into alex's ear and stung him in the ear oh <laughs> we're we're all shouting in the back stop 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 the show because it's just fighting with his bee stuck in his yeah. helmet and stinging him in the ear and <laughs> did they stop the game no, they carried on. Whoa, <laughs> so, that's so you harsh. Can, you can just make it out if you watch the show. Right. Just as we're about to start, people are shouting yeah. in the background, stop. Right. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to have to take a look because I have got a yeah. clip. I have got a clip of it and we'll have to look, see if it's uh, see if it's there. I mean, I've edited uh, bits down. Before we start, I've got to ask you, you know, with everyone on the podium, yeah. if, if you fell off, did you have to go back to that original podium or could you just swim to any old one? No. Anyone that was empty, anyone right. that was empty to go for. And yeah. Was there a specific, did you have to draw numbers from one to 12 to decide what podium would go on, or was it just a free for all? Just pick Yeah, one? no, I think you, you were nominated them. I don't know, I can't remember whether we drew numbers yeah. or not, but everyone nominated a, a, okay, a podium. Yeah. To number. But okay. to be fair, it didn't really matter where you started. But uh, nah. one thing was obvious, and you know, it, they don't look that high on the show, and they're not that high, but when you're stood on them, they, they feel a little unstable. They're and terrifying. You, just yeah. you thought, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, so, remember, uh, I remember when it was a sweeper podium and we were sort of like, we were almost scared to stand up on them because it felt like the thing was rocking yeah. and everything. And yeah. then... I think it's a case of that you're just super conscious that you stood on this little podium. Not that That's it's it. scary and high. I mean, yeah. it's not that high and there's a bit of water underneath you. But it's just you're more conscious of trying to stay balanced. But then yeah. as soon as your focus of your attention is on the sweeper arms and the and the uh, sort of platform going around, yeah. then, of course, you know, you're more focused on that than anything. Yeah. And you, you, yeah. Yeah. Right. Soon okay. Let's see with this to see if we can see what you're talking about with Alex, because you know, it's sort of new for me. Total wipeout. We like to build up our contestants, only to knock them down again. It's Crash Mountain. Three, two, one. It 
tickets. And Dodgy yeah. was the first to go for uh, it. You've, you've edited that he down a bit. Yeah. Sure. Ended, but can't quite hold on. Chopper Brian's on, and he's up. That was very quick. So was that and your second attempt, did you say? Second attempt, yeah. yeah. And then when I got to the middle, I mean, I was there for... I got it. It must be something like five minutes before the next person got across. It was a long time, Goodness you know. Me. And then that, then that whole game went on for the last person to get across. It must have been fifteen minutes at, at least, you know. And I, and I think you know while you're there, time's probably going a bit different to what you imagine yeah. it to be. But a significant period of time, wow. yeah. uh, and we had to reset it because of resetting helmets and, and the likes. Right. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, yeah, it went on a, a, a lot longer than uh, than obviously it course, looks on the telly. Of course, I suppose the difference with that, the fact you're allowed to fall off and recover and go back up and go again, that does make it a longer game because, like for sweeper, sometimes they could be over within two or three minutes and the game is yes, done. Yes, yeah. Yeah, one mm. mistake and you're out. That's it. Um, that's, that's right, yeah. I thought they went on for that long. God, and I was also thinking, for, I suppose it wasn't for you because you did it in two attempts. For those who keep falling over, that's going to get pretty tiring. Falling in the water, climbing up the ladder, timing your jump again if you go down or and also you could be swimming to all different platforms at this point that's gonna get yeah it is you know, looking yourself out the water at those ladders you know they're really what they're probably eight feet above the water there but to getting yourself out of the water wet having just been you know face planted into the water yeah, yeah. it's uh, a lot tougher it's, than it looks i mean it's it's, it's a yeah. you know I, I think you've summed it up in a nutshell is that uh, quite a lot of people will look at this and think oh it's easy i could do it it's not as easy as you think, is it? It's totally different. So, so no, it's not. It's not. It's not the hardest thing to do. It's not some no. great endurance event. No. But you know, all of those things. You know, they 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 just sap your energy. You know, and then of course, yeah. along with that, you're trying to do things as quickly as you can. Yeah. Um. You know, so uh, there's that panic to get back up as quick as you can, and then launch yourself off again. Yeah. And I suppose as well, because we don't have any practice at it, is. It's also the unknown. What's this going to feel like? Because you don't. Because we're used to doing sports where you practice, you train for it, so you're familiar with it. With this, we yes. just guess what it's going to be like. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, it's just a one-hit yeah. wonder, isn't it? Just go for it. Yeah. yeah. So obviously after this, oops. Okay. You, and Brian's not Clark Kent. <laughs> Guy, fifteen years younger than me, and he's put the record time in. So uh, not the best draw, I think, but uh, we're good to go. So if I pause that a second now, am I right um, for the for the dreadmill? Was it uh, a bunch of names put into a hat and you had to draw one out to decide who was against who? Is that how it worked? Yeah, it was. Yeah, because because I got across Crash Mountain first, then right. you had the the first choice of draw of okay. names. Yeah. So, uh, so there was um, me to stick my name in the pot, and of course, who did I pull out? But you know, the quickest yeah. guy on the court. <laughs> Sure, At that you know, point, he was the far, he was the fastest uh, ever. He was, yeah. yeah uh, no you know, thought, that is just my luck. You know, yeah. Classic, classic. You know, it could have been any one of the other five, yeah. and uh, yeah. not to say that they weren't equally as as good anyway. But uh, you know, you pull the quickest guy out of the pot, and you think, right, okay. Yeah, when you got a well, guy that was like forty seconds faster than everyone <laughs> in the qualifier, you think, you're like, oh my goodness me. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, quite a confident chap as well, and uh, you yeah. know, he was. He was all over that course, so uh, he was quite, yeah, he was just, quite tall, wasn't he? Because because you're about six foot, aren't you? Are you six or six one? Yeah, six, six two. Six oh, two. Six two. So okay, right. Was, I'm getting shorter now. I'm getting older, but oh, uh, right. yeah. <laughs> hunching over a little bit. <laughs> was Sean taller than you, out of interest, or about the same height? Well, I'm, I, I'm I'm thinking probably about the same height. I can't yeah. really uh, do much. Yeah, so I, I never really saw much of him. He was always so quick and ahead of me, anyway. Yeah. But. <laughs> just a bit of a blur. Of course, because yeah, no, yeah, go on. Similar sort of build, similar, similar sort of height, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Now, because obviously with this, um, the wrecking ball uh, game. Now, was it a three minutes? I'll tell you what. If I hit the mute button and just play it, and then we can just talk uh, through it, maybe you sort of explain. Uh, am I right that it was three three minutes that the game ran for? Was that the duration? And yeah, I, was still standing. Yeah, I, I don't know about the the three minute. Duration, but all we're told was you know, got to stay in between those two markers there, yeah, uh, and run. Um, now, luck of the draw, I think, in as far as which lane, I think we pulled lots for the lanes. I, I can't quite remember that, but uh, yeah. there's a case of get on there and just run. Now, that that yeah. dreadmill 
started off um, relatively slow and then just every 20 seconds or so would, would increase yeah. in speed. Yeah. And as you can right. see in the background there, you've got a guy either end of the treadmill there with a rope. Oh, pulling yeah, the, they're they, I've, I've just see seen them. them. In the red, yeah, they're manually so, like pulling the thing back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. So proper high tech stuff going on. There. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And then obviously they gradually they're lowering as well. And yeah. and to be fair, I mean, looking at that camera angle there, my my ball looks higher than than Sean's at that mm. stage. Um, what you can't see with that camera angle as well though is like there's quite a breeze going on, yeah. and the balls are blowing across uh, as well. So right, I okay. kind of it, it's pretty much look at the draw there. You know, they yeah. they were just getting lower, they're getting quicker. And I saw Sean go down, mm -hmm. and uh, that obviously took my attention, looking at him on the side there. And I'm running, thinking, oh, is, is that game over, or, or yeah. do I carry on? And then I got clouted in the back of the head uh, right. with the ball that really, really made me focus on, right, okay, I've got to start paying attention here, because obviously he jumped back up uh, and got running again and then uh, went on. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge, right? because it, it really did get quite quick towards the end, you know, yeah. and... Uh, you know, it was just unfortunate that Sean Sean went down so many times and looked like he tweaked his knee as well. On yeah, because I was wondering, because it, it seemed to be when he was on the side uh, sort of thing, if you just put one foot on a moving treadmill, your feet's just going to get swept from under you. And I do wonder if yeah. that, if he just, it seemed like... Just got to keep, yeah. keep with the momentum of the treadmill, haven't you, really? Yeah. That, that thing, you know, as soon as you, yeah, as soon as you go onto that to the side there, you, you've had it. You know, fair play to him to get back onto that treadmill while it's moving at that speed and get straight back up to speed was was some doing as well. Yeah. So I, I think, I mean, to be fair, I think I had a good, you know, the, the wind god was on my side that day and as far as where it was blowing the, the ball. But, you know, yeah. I, I think those things, just, just look at the draw, really. I don't I think, think there was any... I, I did anything. notice your balance was solid on that one. You know, the times that you had to duck and everything like that, because did the ball actually, did the wrecking ball hit you at all during that? Because it didn't look like... It, it, it did once when, as I say, when I saw Sean go down the first time, I did Fine. feel it, it out to me on the back of the head. Yeah. But but then I kind of, I saw the space I had to, to move on, on the treadmill and I saw the wind was blowing it, if I can remember, to my right. Yeah. So I thought I'll try and position over on the left of the What's treadmill to... That that way, I wouldn't have to dock so much. So it's just kind of it's, you know you can't plan plan for those thought, things. I just yeah, you, you're putting your thinking yeah. head on because if the ball is like that, there's, there's one the middle of the ball is the lowest point. If you can position yourself Absolutely. over to the side of the yeah. treadmill, you're minimising your risk of being hit. Yeah, no, it's smart thinking. Yeah. So I tried to get away from the low point of the ball, so I didn't yeah. have to bend down because I'm, yeah. I'm by far the most flexible person in the world. You yeah, know, and so. also at six, or when you think about it as well, at six foot two, your height works against you on a game like this, really, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Yeah, it's yeah, almost absolutely. like say five, five foot two. They they don't have to duck as, as much to miss the ball. So yeah, that that's, oh yeah, you have to jump yeah. up to try and touch it. Exactly. Um, but, yeah. yeah, they yeah, just so go I, for, I, they just go yeah. for a jog and, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. So, I, well, you know, I don't I don't think there's any great science in how it was lowered and you know there yeah. was there was two blokes on either side with a, yeah. with, a with a pulley and it, gradually the whole rigging was just let down so i think yeah. they were lowered they were both lowered on the same rigging yeah. um the actual swing was you know four and a half was done by two yeah. guys on either side pulling ropes so uh, I, I just sort of saw the opportunity to well, well it's blowing that side i'll yeah. go to this side of the uh, the treadmill and yeah. And it kind of worked in my favour, didn't it, really? Yeah, you adapted to the situation. But, of course, in doing so, because I suppose going into this, the fact that you drew him, you think, oh, God, I've, got, I've drawn the fastest person. Effectively, by taking out seemingly the fastest person on the course, kind of put you as, like, the uh, the favourite, then going into the final, didn't it? Because Well, I mean, I, I guess so. I mean, I, having won the, the previous mm -hmm. round and did a round on there. Mm -hmm. But th th that said, you know, there were three of us that got through that round and three yeah. of us into the wipeout zone. So you know that, you know, everyone that gets through that stage has got, yeah, it, it's like everything on, on wipeout obstacles. You know, there's there's a bit of skill involved. You yeah. know, there's a bit of balance. There's a yeah. bit of fitness. And then also, of course, there's, there's, there's a bit of luck as well, yeah. you know, and it's just managing those occasions. You know, I had a bit of luck on that one with the wind blowing the ball to the yeah. right, so I stayed to the left, you yeah. know, and it's taking identifying those sort of moments and mm. um, taking advantage of them you know and yeah. uh, if all those elements come together and then it's your night isn't it yeah you know as it turned out it wasn't my night was it yeah. <laughs> I, well, off in I the think what was <laughs> what was interesting is that the next bit is that it's going to be a clip of what um what dave and uh colin you know were were saying about you 
and you could see the respect they had for you because they were really caught the, the way they sort of viewed trying to go against you and that just seemed like a really daunting task to them. so it shows how highly they they thought of you so basically the next clip now is it will just do the preview and then uh, a bit with the wipeout zone because it, i suppose it falls into the old category you you see the course but you don't know what it's going to be like until you're actually on there doing the obstacles yeah that's for sure yeah, yeah. so let's oh yeah this was the um was this uh, filmed before or after the wipeout zone, or before the storm, should I say? So uh, this is before the storms, really, right. that you do your piece of camera there. And yeah. it's really yeah. funny. On, on that show, my wife always laughs at, at this bit, is when the, you do a little stare into the camera. Now, I was told, yeah, I was told by the crew, you got to look really angry, really psyched yeah. up and ready for the force. So I'm, I'm giving this, like, death stare into the <laughs> camera. <laughs> And uh, I, I don't think they're quite, I took it quite literally, I think. Yeah. So uh, that's why I get that strange old stare at the camera. Yeah. But, that's uh, the more sort of face I'm used to seeing, you know, the, the way you are there. You're yeah. Happy Brian, you know. <laughs> they said, well, look angry and look really, you know, motivated for it. So it's like, okay, do, right. Do they also do the, the count, because they do the individual shots of you. Do they do the one where um, the camera's to the side and they say, right, on the count of three, we want all of you to turn and sort of face the camera. There was all... Yeah, all... that's right. Yeah, they. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's one of the many sort of shots yeah. they're doing between before they do all the, uh, yeah. you know, before you go through the course for their little outtakes and uh, little edits. So, that's yeah. It. Because they had us do all of that and then they didn't use it anyway. So, uh, <laughs> we did right. a lot of... Of course, I suppose... Yeah, there's a... You've reminded me of something that even your interview with Amanda at the end of the qualifier, all of that got edited out, didn't it? Can you remember? Uh, I've just thought of it now. Can you remember what was talked about at the end of that? Or how uh, her reaction to you and stuff? No, I think my my interview must have been suitably dull that they decided not to put it in. So, <laughs> so I think it was more along the lines of, you know, generally, you know, how do you think that went? And, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, a, a few comments on that. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, but uh, obviously what I said wasn't that interesting. So they, they've been, it's, it's on the edit floor. So. Yeah, it's same here. I found nearly all of my interviews all got cut. So yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. yeah. yeah not a natural for the camera. Exactly. Got, got clearly a, not. Yeah. A voice uh, and a face the, for the radio, not the telly. Yeah. That's it. A face for radio and a voice for print or something like that. I think that's, that's what <laughs> yeah, it's nice <laughs> So anyway, let's see what um, Dave and uh, Colin had to say about you. Is it muted? Oh, oops, muted. It's, oops, let's go back. I'm so proud to be right here right now. It's been just so much tougher than I thought it was going to be. Brian, the mountain rescue man, he climbs Snowden, he flies helicopters. I've got to beat him in the final. How do you do that? Brian, he's, he's, so, he's such a machine. I would be very overwhelmed if I could even get close to Brian's time. Can the real life hero chopper Brian pull it off? Colin must be worried. <laughs> Let's get it done. The helicopter rescue pilot starts his maiden flight down killer surf. The Brian's outrun the tidal wave. Colin looks worried this is a quick start. Progress, this is fast. Crazy sweeper. Don't go any close, sir. Oh, oh, oh he's going backwards. He's down. Oh, he's done the one thing he couldn't afford to do. He's made a mistake. What did he do? Oh, I don't think it was deliberate, Colin. Oh, he's handing the lead and the £10,000 to Colin. It's all over for Brian now. And, oh, oh, no. No, he's carved me out. He leaps to the finish, posts a time of 2 minutes 29, which is respectable. Oh, my goodness. Talk to me. Talk to me, Brian. You all right? Oh, oh sorry, I messed that up. I was trying to time it, and uh, he's got the better of me. Well, regardless of that, you were absolutely fantastic tonight. You have been the one to beat all day. Colin been doing this tonight, today, for your twins. And you can go home a proud man because you are the top wipeout champion tonight, Colin! So, Good old Colin. Good old Colin. He's, he's been around the state a couple of nights here as well. As, oh, as brilliant, you know, yeah. Been up to, yeah, good, good friend. Because um, I actually, um, yeah, because I met Colin at the Alton Towers reunion after in oh, yes, 2011. Yeah, yeah. That was the first mm -hmm. time I, I got to, to meet him. And uh, uh, funny enough, I, <laughs> I, I spoke to Colin a, a couple of days ago and uh, Colin has, uh, I, I told him I was going to be doing this chat with you. So uh, he's, he's recorded a couple of questions <laughs> for you. 
brilliant. <laughs> and uh, of course, I, now, am I right? Were you and Colin roommates? Out so there? I was uh, for that show. Mm. I was teamed up with David there in the final. Oh, uh, right, so yeah. We had teammates, and then there was a rejig in the hotel, and then for the champion show, then I, I uh, shared a room with Colin. Oh, so right, okay, got uh, you. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we yeah. got on really well. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good, oh, good friend. No, because I gotta say, is that when I when I met him, I just took a liking to him instantly. He was just uh, he was a great laugh. But I oh, mean, he's, he's definitely one of those characters, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Uh, what I found, I mean, he was not expecting that result in the slide. Well, I don't think either, neither of them fancied their chances against you, so they weren't except because I think wasn't it even production were expecting you to to pull it off? Did, didn't they have a bit of money on you or something? Or well, I don't know. At the end, uh, one of the uh, one of the team came across and said that you know that they had to. You know, an in-house bet or something going on, which right. I'm sure they do with Joe, who yeah. they think was going to win. And uh, yeah, so yeah, well, that's it. You know, that's where yeah. the whole the whole luck thing, the skill thing, and Colin was the better man on on the night yeah. there, really. But oh god, I was I was so frustrated because <laughs> yeah. whilst we were waiting for the um, for it to get dark, really, you yeah. know, Colin and I and David would go and have a look, and you could look at the the course from a distance. You weren't allowed yeah. to touch anything. And you could see in the wind that sweeper arm that was blowing around. And we stand there and looking at it. And there's one of the balls, uh, one of the ends of the sweeper arm has got a round ball and one is a, a cube. Oh, and of course, yeah, the cube yeah. the cube doesn't stick out quite as far. And we're looking at swinging around thinking, yeah, we could probably get into that corner and it would just go past, let it go past and then follow the sweeper arm around yeah. Um, yeah. on there. But just my luck that when I got to that corner, it was the the sphere, the round uh, bit yeah. came round rather than the cube. So oh. it's that additional bit we hadn't really accounted for. Then just when I saw it coming, I thought, I, I'm not, it's going to hit me, I, you know. And uh, so, yeah, it knocked me back and in the water. And then, you know, the world's worst swimmer in the yeah. world uh, plodded across. But then right. even more for Yeah, go oh, on. Sorry. Yeah, 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 go on, carry on. Yeah, so even more frustrating then, you, you go up onto the next obstacle. Uh, and it, all it is is a rope swing through those, uh, you know, through those sort of, three sort of little waterfalls and you, yeah. you can't really see where you're going because that it's dark you've got water in your eyes you're hopping yeah. and you're puffing and you know i've swung on rope swings all my life as a child and it was going to be the most the poorest rope swing i've ever done in my life <laughs> you, know, you, you, me the though. you know you've said that you swing through waterfalls you almost can't yeah. see that on the screen people think it's just a straight rope swing to that rotating platform but you're effectively blind you're going through a waterfall and you just can't see anything then can you yeah you can't see anything because it's dark there's flashing lights yeah. there's three streams of water you got a rough idea where you're going yeah. but you don't you certainly don't have a clear run at it yeah and uh, and then yeah a wet rope you know poor technique and uh, so that's the one thing when it got to the champ show that when i got to that uh, rope swing again yeah. i really yeah. I had a little reset in my in my head and went right grip pull it back and really yeah. give it a good swing through yeah. that's the one thing i did not want to uh, mess up again so it was all about all about making amends so uh, yeah this this next bit right this is um uh these are a couple of questions from colin now he sent them over on sunday so as you can imagine oh, you know what you know what colin's like so there's going to be a lot of banter <laughs> coming up <laughs> <laughs> so, okay i think this is the next one okay my question to Brian would be, is how did he feel about getting beat by a 45-year-old man? <laughs> and the words of Richard Hammond that spends most of his days sitting on his bottom. And the follow-up question would be, did that motivate you at all, Brian, in the champion of champions? Because I can tell you, the only reason why I didn't get through the qualifier is because I felt, felt so sorry for you that you wasn't going to get your bathroom. <laughs> and finally, I have a lot of faith in you, Brian, winning the champion of the champions. And the only reason why I knew that is because I've eliminated myself. <laughs> <laughs> just, that, is, that is him all over. I mean, I noticed even when I first met, uh, met you two, there was so much Mickey taking back and forth with it, wasn't it? He was just yeah, he's yeah, he's comedy yeah, guy. yeah, proper dark horse is Colin. There he goes on about his age, 
and uh, it's a bit like at the moment I train with a good friend of mine up the street there he's yeah. he's sort of 12 years younger than me and I always bring the age thing into it because yeah. I'm 12 years older than him but right. uh, yeah. oh Colin was a wily old fox eh? he's, yeah. uh, you know, I tell you what I noticed with Colin when I met him I don't know what his his workout routine he had some serious guns on him didn't he Oh, I didn't he just when you look at him on those those rings when he got across there, he had yeah. a good old grip on him. It was yeah, it was uh, yeah, he may, may, may be sitting around on his backside all day teaching people to drive, but uh, there's well, a lot of upper body work gym. going on there somewhere. Yeah. He does quite a lot maybe, in the gym, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, maybe it's all those drive through uh, burger places he goes to and you get a lot of work out picking the burgers and donuts. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been it. <laughs> In fact, I but, uh, actually, I, I, I said to Colin, I am going to do an interview with him at a later date. So uh, maybe, maybe you can get your own back and throw a few questions. Oh, I, I, I can on that some of the questions. Yeah, but you know, generally though, I mean, uh, of course, three of us in that final, any one of us could have gone away with ten thousand yeah. pounds. When it's when you've got that ten thousand pounds sort of dangling in front of you, yeah, and you make silly mistakes. Yeah, I was utterly gutted by the, the sort of ridiculous mistakes I've made because ten thousand pounds is you know a good of wedge of money to be taking yeah. away. And uh but that said, I really play you know, I, it couldn't have gone to a nicer guy. Yeah. You know, uh, David, really top bloke as well. Yeah. Colin, you know, really, really nice guy. And it, it, it's even better that, you know, it it's gone to different people, you know, winning 10 grand in that and then winning it again in the in the uh, champion show would have been a bit you know, a little unfair yeah. on everyone else that's turned up there. So, I well, I suppose you know, this way, it, this your show produced two champions, then didn't it? You yeah, know, absolutely. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to sort of sit there and try and be, a, you know, a, some sort of hero and saying, oh, I'm, you know, I didn't want it and someone else wanted it. Of course, you know, it would be nice yeah. to come back with twenty grand. Of course, yeah. Of course, yeah. But, uh, but it was really, really good. Uh, you know that uh, that Colin took that win, and yeah. uh, you know what? And it, it just made for a, you know a great show. And you know, I'd like to think Colin would appreciate the fact that I was only warming up, using him as a warm up for the next show anyway. So <laughs> I was waiting for it. I knew this was coming. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely um, when I'm ready to um, uh, to do an interview with Colin, I'll uh, I'll be in touch. Yeah, with you can, yeah. uh, yeah, you can throw it, it, it just got it just got to remember colin that you know nobody is perfect you know he, even even i thought i was wrong about something the other day it turned out i was right <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well this is brilliant so obviously then i mean now am i right that you stayed out in argentina to wait for the champion show didn't you was it it was filmed a few days after this yeah first? that's right so uh because we were show seven of seven in, yeah. in the series um show episode six as well were also staying out the, right. the three guys there to go, to yeah. go into the finals so they actually had quite a long stay out there yeah um so day two um after day two filming uh the next day the the rest of the guys that uh, didn't get through to wipe out zone yeah. went home yeah. and then we stayed there for another couple of days we were just hanging around at the hotel and downtown buenos aires which is yeah. you know Bad place to stay at if you want a steak. It's a, an awesome place for that. Yeah. Where oh, did you go to the one pity. that has that stuff like bull or whatever in the? Uh, that was, I'm sure, production point. Yeah, the, the one we went on the first night is where the production told us like a big uh, grill house, if you like, like yeah. an open barbecue. But then yeah. uh, David, who I shared the room with the first night, is a bit of a um, city guy anyway, and he, you know, at the time, you know, he had all his sort of into his tech. I think he worked for Sega. He worked on Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, didn't yeah, Did he? yeah. So oh, okay, yeah. yeah, so he was all into his apps and things and uh, whatever they were then ten years yeah. ago. And he found this place uh, that claimed to be a you know the best steakhouse in town. Right. And we tracked it down, and it was, and I kid you not, it was a replica. For the set of the cafe in Allo Allo, can you remember that little really? corner cafe? Yeah, vaguely, yeah, 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 vaguely, yeah. And uh, so we went in there. Thought, oh, what's this place? But they serve just like the best steaks, you know. So, uh, so we had a couple of nights doing doing those sort of things while they flew the other guys out. Right. Uh, they had you know a day to adjust to you know after the travels, and then we yeah. went through the whole process again uh, of you know day one doing your filming, doing your qualifier, and then uh, into the rounds for the. Uh, for, the, for day two for those that got through i got you yeah because i did actually see in some of the photos i think for your first episode wasn't it uh can't remember his full name edward scissor legs or edward, edward scissor 
Yeah, 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 right. yeah, I've seen uh, some pictures of him on set with with your first episode. I think he was. It, it, was he mulling around on set for your first for your first episode? No, so he must. He was on. He must have been then because uh, he wasn't in our show. He must have been on series six. So it was him, Troy. Yeah. And, and oh, I can't remember the other one. It'll come to me in a bit. But anyway, yeah. So Ed, Ed would have been on on series six. Got you. Yeah, yeah. So he was the hairdresser. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, no, right. I found when I was looking at some of the photos, trying to find some of the ones of your you on set, I noticed him popping up in a couple of photos. So I thought, oh, he must have been mulling around yeah. on the uh, on, on yeah. So the, 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 the three winners from that show, the, the finalists from that uh, the previous episode, just yeah. came down on the set with us during the day. So they you oh, know they you. just yeah. hung around. But it, but it was really strange meeting them first because yeah. you ran into the hotel and they were hanging around the hotel when you got there and you thought, oh, they've done it. They've they've been there. They've done it. They know yeah. the show and everything and. Uh, did, yeah, you end up asking kind of... them any, did you end up asking them any questions at all before you'd run the... Were you allowed to talk to them before you'd run the... Yeah, call? they were just oh. hanging out with everyone, but I, I think uh, didn't really have any chance to, to chat to them about anything because yeah. you, you took it for what it was. But, uh, you know, it's... It, it's Yeah, they were nice guys. And I think they were keen to uh, try and just let people know what they'd done and, and give yeah. us as much information as we could. But, yeah. I mean, I can't remember anything specific, but, uh, yeah. yeah, they came around. They were nice guys and, you know, I'll tell you what I remember with because uh, obviously I was in episode six of my series and episode seven were turning up at the hotel. And what they said to us, they said, look, you you can spend about 30 minutes chatting to them. Just one thing. Don't give any results away at all. So they went, John, you're not allowed to say you won. Keep, keep that quiet. <laughs> but it Brilliant. turns out one of the others had obviously mentioned it. And then someone came up to them and said, uh, did, did you win at all? I went, oh, no, 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 it's all right. I've already been told. I know you've won. And they said, right, right. let's do the sucker punch ball. <laughs> so it was, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, you always get these amusing ones. So, sorry, let me put it back on screen share because I'm at the, uh, we're just going to quickly run through what happened in the, champ show because obviously for you this was all about like right in the uh right in the wrongs as it were wasn't it so right, it's just oh, gonna yeah. come up yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the, uh... and <laughs> let's see can oh nope wrong one oh dip look at this this is the okay. problem with technology right let's go to it's it big sure. this time he's had practice launches himself into the water he did reach ball three and his splashback reaches Amanda, which is a bonus. All right, final obstacle, perfect swing. Just one jump to go. Brian takes his time. Ooh, just enough. One foot on and he's home. Uh, I was impressed. How did you manage to splash that far from the ball and actually hit the cameraman and Amanda? <laughs> that takes some doing. <laughs> not, not so sure I had any great control on that one, but all I knew was just, just leg it, get across on dirty. I thought having been in the mud then, I thought, oh, God, here we go. You know, I just realised, yeah, because you were, you had a lot more mud on you this <laughs> second time round, didn't you, compared to uh, your original yeah. show? Yeah, just that, a bit, yeah, I am getting in the mud on the, on the sucker punch, obviously, yeah. Yeah. Did you find that that changed the feel of trying to go on the balls and everything? If you're covered in mud, everything's more slippery then. Is that what you found? or? Yeah, and, you know, just you're a little bit more, you know, it, it, that mud is pretty sticky. You yeah. know, and getting yourself out of that. Although it wasn't, I didn't get in too deep. I managed to yeah. stay on the surface, but uh, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, you're up there. You know, you're slippy. You know, you know, yeah. it's not going to go too well. So just, just leg it and give it your best. But in what, the back it, of your mind, you're thinking, you know, I, I did a lot better in the previous show, so this is going to be a lot slower. And you know, you know is this what? the end of? This was where I think my mindset was wrong in the champ show because because I didn't really get muddy at all in the first one. And the first couple of up to the balls, it was going okay because I fell in everything. Like mentally, yeah. I was just like I was like shoulders down, tail between the legs, that sort of thing. And it was just it, it, everything was sort of wrong. And I was just convinced, oh, that's it, I'm out, you know. And I, just, I think I just had the wrong mindset. If I just kept just like plowing forwards, probably would have fared a bit uh, a bit better. But it was, uh, I suppose, just just how it is on the day, really, isn't it? It's just uh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep moving but forward. <laughs> I do notice. At least you haven't got mud. Have you got mud on your face? I can't remember because, like with me, I was coated across my eye. I couldn't even see out of one eye. It was right. <laughs> no, I, I think I was a bit of mud everywhere. I think, but uh, yeah, just generally, I remember going flat on my, my belly and sort of that's it. Yeah, you know, crawling out. Well, yeah. at least when you go in the water, it rinses it all off. Then, so that was really. Well, that's that. That that was the bonus. Yeah, <laughs> that was, yeah, that was good. Now, obviously, I haven't got a clip of of Crash Mountain, but am I right that on Crash Mountain you were first? To the uh, to cross it again on that one, yeah. I was it kind of be, you know, it was 
the, the game that suited me, if you like. Yeah. I was straight across again. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, next across, I believe, was Troy. Yeah. And I saw him coming across and uh, you could see he was about to get, you know, taken out by the sweeper arm. You know, he may have got himself over. So I just grabbed hold of him yeah. and avoid him on. And uh, just as I was doing that, I was thinking, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's so strong. And, you know, so, but of course I'm going to help him on, you know, he's got yeah. across and, and, and ahoy him on, you know, someone's got that far across and, uh, yeah, why wouldn't you help? Well, but uh, I, I, yeah, I was, I was looking at it thinking it's just just my look. I'm yeah. going to get Troy on here, and he's going to smash me in the next round. <laughs> well, isn't it, it, it? Wasn't it Hammond that basically said, "What is it with Brian? He can't help rescuing people." It's like you, you're in danger, yeah, really like, aren't you? It's just you're naturally yeah. sort of rescuing people all the time. And it was um, it was more of more of the same. Now, was it from Crash Mat? Only five of you could qualify for that, whereas it was six for Dreadmill, but it was five for. Dizzy Dummies. Yeah, right, Dizzy Dummies. Yeah, yeah. blimey, Dizzy Dummies. <laughs> of course, yeah, because that was your first time, because I never got to experience it in my first show, and I never made it in the second, but I always wondered, I mean, how bad is it being spun around? Uh, you know what, and I'm, I'm, I'm particularly sensitive to motion sometimes, you know, I get seasick quite quickly and things like this, but uh, that thing just rotated like, you know, it, it looks fairly quick on the camera, so if it looks pretty quick on the camera, when you're in it, you just... I was completely incapacitated <laughs> when I came off. And you could just, when you see it, you know, you could see my, my reaction to it all. And yeah. so it's obviously split into two rounds on yeah. that. And it seemed to go um, okay-ish on the first one. We went up and over the ramps. I don't know yeah. whether you're going to cover that later um, on. but I've so. got, I, the only clip I've got is of the, the first one. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's just go to it now. And then you'll, you'll see. Oh, one of these guys won't make it. Yep. <laughs> Good old Derek. And... <laughs> wow, Derek drags Brian down with him. He does. He's he, not Derek grabbed your ankle. Then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it getting, was it really getting like elbows out and like every man for himself well, type thing? Was it like panic it, mode or? It, it, it wasn't until that moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> Derek seemed to uh, sort of start deploying some tactics and I think he went yeah. on in the next on the dummies there, but. Uh, you know, it was all done in, in you know, in, <laughs> for a bit of fun. But, you yeah. know, ultimately, you, know, you are still going for 10 grand. You think, hang on, yeah. come on. You know, jumping off and blatantly grabbing me off is, yeah. uh, <laughs> I thought was a bit, <laughs> a bit off. But, uh, yeah. you know, I'm not going to lose yeah, too I much sleep about it. Would you because, of course, I, d I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? But, yeah. uh, but then also, I feel so bad for uh, Precise Lee as well on that because, got across both those ramps and then yeah. didn't manage to get to the end of the um, that particular obstacle and yeah. uh, had to swim back round and get back on and then went on and Derek then grabbed hold of my leg and then everyone's getting a bit desperate because you can see I think Troy just like ran away and got straight yeah. across um, so then when I ended up in the water again after Derek had grabbed hold of the leg I thought oh yeah. that's it you know, game over me and yeah. So I, I then jumped onto the first ramp, and as they tipped over, the other ramp had mm. gone up in the opposite oh, sense. So like, oh. you couldn't, you yeah. couldn't jump to the other so, ramp because it was against you. Yeah, because it yeah. was up, and I, th and I just had this brainwave moment, just run to the middle of the board uh, and and balance it. And you can see it in the background on the show that right. I, I'm there, running from one side to the other to keep it upright. Right. Because. If I let it tip one way, I'm going to slip back down to the start where right. Lee is waiting. Yeah. And if I go the other way, well, I can't jump onto the other ramp because it's up in the air. Right. So I kind of got on it like a bit like a surfboard, a skateboard. Oh, like a sort of, you were trying like, to balance it sort of thing. Obviously. Balance it, yeah. And of course, that then meant that old uh, Lee couldn't, precisely couldn't jump jump on. So I thought oh, I I'd give it. myself a bit, a bit of space there. Get, get onto it, yeah. It, yeah and i uh, thought if he does jump on that's going to slide me back off there and then of course whoever's in front of me and then jumped across opened up the, the second ramp for me yeah. to then leap across onto and uh yeah i know well precisely got a bit of a uh when he jumped on as i jumped on on one occasion the ramp went up not that you're aware of where people no, are you can't so see behind he you, no. twisted, twisted his leg you know it's just you know it, it's all in the game, I guess, but uh, yeah. I suppose you know, really, think about how much you were spun around. You're probably, if it was me, I would have been puking up at that point. You're so disorientated. You don't know what's going on around you, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, I, I tell you, those spins definitely affected some people more than yeah. others. And uh, that first spin didn't affect Troy at all. It was gone. It was really? Like a, yeah, it was wow. just, and, uh, yeah. 
But the second no, time, the like sec- all the all the moonwalk and all the spins, he's just used to it anyway. <laughs> yeah, possibly so. Yeah. yeah. And the second one was just awful, and I, I remember just unstrapping, falling almost out of the machine, right. looking at people disappearing off to the uh, the donuts to get yeah. across, and thinking I'm just completely incapacitated. And and then it was just like, right, you got to go, you got to go now. If you don't go now, yeah, you know, you're just going to watch people run away with it. And uh, right. so I'm, the other guys had been on the donuts um, for a little bit and falling in. But it worked out that the edges of the donuts were, were covered in grease. Okay. So, yeah. so when I jumped on, I was quite conscious to, or well, the middle of the donut was covered in grease. So I keep my, my soles up and then yeah. place them oh, on the edges of yeah. the donut to, to get a, a better grip to, to push yeah. up onto each one. That seemed to work. And of course, I got across first yeah. in the second half of that round, which meant again, I went into the final yeah. uh, as being, you know, the, you know, the pseudo favorite, if you like, or the yeah. last to go final yeah 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 because i i do remember when i was watching the game i could see the dollops of grease all on the because again for the second round they had the dollop uh, you know the the donuts uh for us yes we were watching like james chris yeah. and dan and uh jack it was uh for us and i remember seeing because and i never thought about that yeah if your shoe gets the grease on it then you're just going to be slipping everywhere aren't you so yeah, you, you can't push off the donut to jump across and that was causing a lot of people the problem for right. not getting across the donut because there's no no traction Not you yeah Again, smart thinking. Well, that's it. It's all about adapting to your surroundings. Obviously, then, you know, you get through, obviously, you know, you're going last. Well, I take it you didn't have to go at midnight on the Champs one. There was no thunderstorms this time around? No no thunderstorms on that one. It just Uh, just ran pretty good for that. Yeah. So that was good. Uh, I, for me, I uh, will go to it now. I loved your shout out at the start of your reasons for doing for the 10 grand because they always ask us if you win the money, what are you going to spend it on? And they say, we don't want to hear that. Oh, I'm just going to pay off a few debts. or I'm going to buy a car. I thought yours was yeah. just genius. <laughs> so yeah, let's, I yeah. think this is, oops, wait a minute. No, no, no. We've done that one. This. The things I do to get my wife a new bathroom. This one for you, Cap. And Brian knocks 10 seconds off CSI James's time, making Chopper Brian the total wipeout champion of champions. James has had a fantastic run tonight. It's been the most incredible final. You're both absolutely brilliant. You wanted to right the wrong that you made the last time. And you have. You were the champion of champion, Brian. Congratulations. Good luck, James. <laughs> I, I, I thought that was good. And, and I can vouch for the bathroom because I've stayed because when I've stayed at yours, because uh yeah, after yeah. Snowdonia, I was soaking in the bath afterwards because my legs had just gone, <laughs> had just totally seized up on me. Post marathon yeah. bath, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Oh god. Uh, yeah, really funny because everyone, you know, when when the show was aired. You know, people would uh, would come up to you and say and talk to you about it, people you don't know, and everybody would come up to me and say. First, they would call me Chopper Colin, and the next question would be, um, "How's the kitchen?" Yeah. <laughs> everybody, everybody's amazing. They heard it as, uh, no, "I'm going to get a new kitchen," but yeah, uh, oh, no, definitely a bathroom as as you've seen and sat yeah. in, you know. Uh, unless you've been bar- unless you've been bathing in my sink after the marathon, yeah. then uh, <laughs> yeah. it's funny though, isn't it? How sometimes we hear words, but we sort of hear it, but our our brain is telling us something else. So they hear bathroom, and they're just thinking kitchen. It's uh, this happens to me yeah. quite a lot. Where I think I've heard someone say something, and it turns out they said something completely different. That's it, definitely. Um, but I must say, what impressed me as well. Well, I got to ask, what was your reaction when Amanda said you'd won? Because what? You knew that you made less mistakes this time. Did you feel that you'd possibly done enough to uh, to win it? Because obviously you got headphones so, on, haven't you? So you couldn't. Yeah, absolutely. So, so right, I, I I'm sat in there with uh, with James in the tent, which is you know it's probably fifty meters down away from the site. Yeah. Um, and one thing you can hear through the headphones, whatever we were sat opposite each other, myself and James on, on the yeah. sofas, mm. and listening to the music. Hear the uh, the hooter go for yeah. uh, Troy, yeah. and then heard it hoot for him finishing. Right, and I looked at James and I went two minutes, and he was like, mm, "Yeah, okay." And then so off off James goes to do his, yeah. 
and you can hear the hooter and think oh, that's roughly the same sort of time um so when i get called to go out and up, up the steps mm -hmm. i'm just seeing the end of their interview yeah. and uh and troy's walking away and james yeah. left like, wow okay so yeah. uh uh, James obviously went a lot quicker than, than Troy, so he's had a bit of a yeah. flyer. So, of course, when I fell off again in, in that round, yeah, uh, again on the same obstacle, yeah, uh, I, I kind of thought, yeah, I, I've probably blown my chances again. So I really made sure, as I said earlier, about that second rope swing. I'm really yeah. going to have a good run. I got across, yeah. hit the hooter, and I was genuinely like thinking, yeah, I think I've blown it again. Yeah. I really was. So it was a genuine surprise when yeah. she said that, you know, you've got it because, uh, yeah, I knew it had yeah. gone okay, but I'd had that fall. But That's no, it, yeah. I, was, I was super made up. You know, it really was. Yeah. I got to say, now, you know, you had to put headphones on, uh, mm. you know, for yours. Uh, that may have been something to do with me because in my series, we didn't have to use headphones at all. We were just sat there. Now, like okay. you, I was I was the third person to go, and uh, so we had Rob, Benny, and myself. You know, in my episode, Rob goes first, and I hear the klaxon go, and then me and Benny are chatting amongst ourselves. And after a little while, I just thought, oh, if I start counting in my head, I'll try and get an idea. And I counted up to about three and a half minutes, so I knew that he was probably about three and a half, four minutes. Um, so I thought, okay, so I got a rough idea of where he's at, and then Benny went. As soon as Benny went out of the tent, our fan uh, came in, and he went, "John, have you been counting?" I went, "Maybe." He goes, "Yeah, you're not allowed to do that." He said, "Right, I'm going to sit with you, and I'm going to have to put you off now so that you can't pay attention to what's going on outside." He said, "You're not counting how fast Benny is on this <laughs> because he said you're right. supposed to be a surprise. You meant to just go in and do what what you can." So we were chatting. And it was meant to um, put me off. And all that happened, I heard the klaxon go at the start. We're having a conversation. Then I hear the fireworks go off at the end. And I just said to him, I said, look, I wasn't counting. I said, that was definitely quicker than Rob. And yeah. course, then I heard for your series to try and muffle it out. They were putting headphones on everyone. So right. I, that, yeah. may have been, that may have been my fault. Oh, um, well, there you are. The... Yeah, so sorry about that. But I'm impressed that you could still, <laughs> clever thinking, though, you could still hear the, the klaxon at the start and, you know, the finish buzzer anyway. So effectively... Yeah, okay. It gave you a rough idea, didn't it? Yeah. But then, like you know, when you're on the course, you're just just going as quick as you can, aren't you? Exactly, and uh, yeah. you're kind of not that aware of time, but you you're aware of how you've done on obstacles. Yeah. You know, so if you've fallen off one, you think, yeah, okay, that's probably yeah. your your game over. Well, I, yeah, because I remember with me that by the time because I was making like little mistakes here and there, and I was thinking like I should be going quicker than this. And when I pushed the buzzer at the end, I was like pushing it, thinking like, have I done enough? I thought, I'm not sure. And I thought, well, maybe I've come seconds. So I thought, well, mm. I've, got, I've done a lot better than expected. So I thought, yeah, 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 I'm happy with that. So I genuinely, like you, I was not expected to be told that, yeah, you won. Sort of, yeah. And yeah. at least you remembered to say what, you're, what you were going to do with the money. Because I totally <laughs> forgot. My, my, my head went completely blank. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, well, it was, uh, yeah, a surprise and uh, a welcome one at that. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, what I really like as well is that just after this, of course, you filmed it in late 2009. It aired in 2010. And then uh, you and your the ones from your show, we'll, we'll see on here, um, there was you started organising reunions together. So you, you've all sort of kept, quite a lot of you have kept in touch uh, quite a bit. Cause this yeah, was in... we did. I mean, they've kind of petered out now because, yeah. you know, it, it took, you know, 12 years have passed, I guess, yeah, 12, yeah. 13. But uh, yeah, for a good few years after we we arranged trips, we'd all meet up at Alton Towers and mm -hmm. <clears throat> got the guys up to Snowdonia here and I took them up yeah. for Snowden for the day and we had a weekend barbecue back at ours. Uh, right. or my yeah. And wasn't yeah, it, um, so, uh, you all stayed at, was it Ben's Bunker? There was that sort of place nearby. Yeah, in ben, ben, yeah my mate Rob's place just in, in Clamberis Pass. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice setup there. So they all yeah. stayed down there and we ended up having a, a barbie at mine in the evening and yeah we, we all hiked up snowden that day good day for it as well yeah, it know, was so. of course you can see <laughs> everyone from your show and then there's me crashing the party because yeah, I, 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 I was expecting people from other episodes <laughs> to turn up and it turned out it was just me <laughs> <laughs> everyone's well yeah yeah but uh, of course then obviously um there was alton towers the following uh, the following year that's what amazed me because we tried this in our show we tried to organize things but it never quite materialized after so the fact that you all managed to pick a date, 
you know, quite a few of you turn up. That was really impressive because not every show managed this. You know, they. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, they no, we were lucky there. Well, we, we, as we say, we we all got on so well that it yeah. was quite a good unique group that mm. uh, yeah we just had some good good times oh, absolutely now obviously with your name on the show and, and look anyone watching it uh, they know your name obviously it revolves around your your job and um do you want to talk us through a little bit there? i mean how long how long have you been doing uh the the mountain rescue? did it start with mountain rescue or was it uh, raf that i think you you're in isn't it or yeah. Okay. So uh, um, that side of my life really was. Uh, yeah, I joined the air force back in '95 to be to be a pilot, and then <clears throat> throughout flying training, the, the the breaks until the next course comes along. So I'd always had an interest in in walking and the hill walking. Right. But I had an opportunity then to uh, hold, as they call it, you know, over yeah. a, a fine little job in between flying courses, um, right. and with the RAF Mountain Rescue Service, which got me into mountain rescue. Uh, which sparked an interest then in search and rescue, which is the you know the helicopter side of things. Yeah. So as it was, I, you know, um, the two kind of married. My 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 pastime and yeah. you know my professional career kind of uh, linked together quite nicely down that route. Yeah. And I was lucky yeah. enough eventually to to go down the search and rescue route, right. um, and still keep the mountain rescue side going as well with the air force. Right. Uh, I ended up uh, as that picture is there in the uh, on the Griffin, eventually teaching. But that's at RAF Valley on Anglesey, where I am. Oh, okay, um, right, yeah. And um, so uh, I joined and uh, met my, my wife then, who was on the local rescue team, and joined oh, the so local you, civilian. You and Kath met at the RAF? <clears throat> no, no, no. She was oh. she was on the local civilian rescue team, and I was oh, on. Okay, yeah. Uh, I was flying, yeah, as the, then, as was the big old right. yellow Sea King helicopters. Right. Uh, did a uh, an exercise up in Clamberis Pass here, and I ended up right. winching them up onto the hillside and right. as a result of that we ended up at a um a, a local team barbecue to cut a long right. story short and, yeah and, and, and met there uh, oh, and then, since then yeah it's you know it's 20 odd years ago now so uh, yes, I, was thinking, cause I was trying to think how long you've been married now it's been it's been a while isn't it so because i've known you for 10 12 about 12 years i think i've known you now been, yeah well we got together in 2000 and right. then we got married in Three, so we, we're knocking on 20 years of getting married now. Oh, wow, so, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, but next year will be the big big 20th for you, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, we'll have to sort something out, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah sounds probably good. a new bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another one. We'll have to try and find another show for you, won't we? <laughs> yeah, see if we can get, them, see get them to get them to fund it. So, um, <laughs> is this now this shot here? Is this the same as uh, the same helicopter or is it a different one? In fact, is this around Snowden? I'm trying to see the uh, yeah, that. You're looking straight at the Clamberis Pass on that's the Snowden as a hill on the right in the right windscreen okay. there. Yeah. on the main lake in the in the valley there right. on the way. In fact, if just uh, just uh you know at the base base of the hill there, you can see just just out the cockpit. Yeah, this is uh this is me post the Air Force. I right. but then we joined as a, a civilian member teaching right. uh, um, the guys similar stuff this is in the bell 412 helicopter the the griffin which was the, the photo your first show right uh, so <clears throat> yeah i spent yeah 2003 2004 2003 i went over onto the the 412 this aircraft and flew that to until 2018 um yeah. got me all around the place but that's where i was instructing from 2003 onwards right. um and yeah so i even got to get out to jamaica and train the jamaicans out there they fly the same aircraft yeah. not the commonwealth so you know got yeah. some, some nice in fact only today i was chatting to one of the guys out in jamaica there because old uh, prince william's out there at the moment so right. i was chatting to one of the Jamaican lads out there that uh, that are trained as well so well, yeah in fact, you you've just led us something we'll <coughs> go to this one in a minute uh speaking of uh prince william is it uh can you just uh, confirm this because they never mention it on the show but did you train him to, because that helicopter in the back there, that's the sort of ones that you fly. Did you train Prince William up to, to fly helicopters? Uh, yeah, I, I did. Um, I mean, obviously there's there's many stages to his training. Yeah. Um, so uh, basically every helicopter pilot in the Air Force, as was then when we had search rescue capability that, you know, mm. that he stood in front of there, um, got, got a search and rescue package. So right. I was nominated, the, the particular unit I worked at or work at still now, yeah. we concentrate on, on the search and rescue techniques. So I was right. nominated his primary instructor for that right. period, 
basic training. So, um, so yeah, we, we flew together. I taught them how to fly in the mountains, how to winch yeah. onto the back of a ship, winch people yeah. out of the water, lifts, that sort of thing. Yeah. He then went back and completed his training and got his, his wings, his qualification that uh, qualifies him as a pilot. And then because he was going search and rescue, yeah. uh, he then came back to me and I did another extended course with him showing him a few more advanced techniques in those skills that we'd previously uh, given him uh, before he then moved on to the aircraft that you see us stood out in front of now, which is at the same unit that I'm at now. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing there is uh, he went then operational on that mm -hmm. and I was on the local civilian mountain rescue team as well. So quite often, you know, of a dark night, stormy mm -hmm. night when uh, there are rescues on, then uh, he, he would fly in and he would be picking me up as a mountain rescue member now oh, and flying right. in. Yeah. So there was, there, there was an ulterior motive to making sure he could do things properly because I knew I'd be jumping on the back uh, right. on a dark and storm night. So, so, uh, so, you so yeah, no. Work, so you two were working on rescues together occasionally? Is that is that? Yeah, what you're occasionally. Doing? It was yeah. kind of getting towards the end of my mountain rescue uh, right. career. But yeah, many occasions and certainly around the period when he got married. Yeah. Um, I don't remember in the, in, in the press, you probably don't, but a couple of days after he got married, he ended up back on shift at work. Um, and there was a, a rescue there that he landed on. That rings a bell, a, actually. I'm sure. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it was it 2011 that he got married. Was it 2010, 2011? Oh, I, I can't remember. Yeah. Can't remember. It was, it, yeah, it, it would have been around about that period, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, so um, but uh, yeah, there are other sort of things going on in the world at the time, which uh, um, meant for him to be, I, I'm guess, safer to be back in this this country, and right. he was back at work here rather than going away abroad on a honeymoon at yeah. the time but uh, uh not that i have any sort of information on that but uh yeah so he was he was a busy lad he was you know uh, you know a genuinely nice guy you know yeah. um people you know a lot of people are skeptical about people in his position you yeah. know getting jobs like that and yeah of course there are privileges that come with that you know who he is and yeah. his background yeah. but what i can say and I'll put all the uh, naysayers to sort of bed in this, that he was treated when he came through training, yeah. no different uh, than anybody else that came through the training for all the reasons well, I, I said about Yeah, Because I knew he was, he was going to be picking me up in the middle of a dark, stormy yeah. night on there. But genuinely, you know, a switched on guy, good pair of hands, yeah. and uh, just a genuine character. And not once, not once did he ever sort of pull the, right, I'm going to be king card, I'm not doing yeah. that. Not he was always willing to dig in, you know, a genuine character. And uh, whether you're a royalist or not, you know, put that aside. It doesn't matter. You know, yeah, it's the fact that he's a person. Yeah. yeah, just a generally nice guy. And uh, yeah. yeah, did really well for himself. And nice to see him doing it properly as well, you know. Yeah. So that was good. No, yeah. no, it was brilliant. Actually, I'm just sort of curious. Um, did you know him before you, was it before you did Wipeout that you, uh, that you, were, you first got introduced to him and, and got to know him? So it was in between the two right. and uh, it's quite funny really because I'd done the first course with him mm -hmm. uh, and then he went back as I said to go and finish off his professional training before he came back to me for the second course and it was in right. that period that I went and did wipe out right and uh, as you know we were all told that until it gets aired don't tell anybody how you how you got on yeah so of course yeah he was you know, oh, how did you get on how did you get on? Yeah. Oh, I can't tell you I can't tell you <laughs> I kind no of privileges there for him. He couldn't get any internet. Uh, so. yeah, yeah, he's a, a bright lad, as you can imagine. I think yeah. he worked out what uh, what the result was from some yeah. of the things that. Did. But that said, he wasn't that sure uh, enough to that when the Wipeout Champion Show was being aired, it yeah. was the same day as the FA Cup final. Now oh, right. he was down mm. at uh, you know the at Wembley, handing out yeah. the FA Cup. Wasn't he there? Right. But so. Uh, what, what he did have on record whilst he was there was the Wipeout show. Right. Because so, he, he wasn't sure whether I did actually win. So he right. said that the first thing he did when he got back was go back, fast forward through the Wipeout show to the end to see whether I'd won or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he just skipped right to, right to the end just to see. Yeah, that's Wipeout it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's got time to see the whole thing, but uh, right. then. Uh, Brilliant. Uh, but, uh, oh, that's yeah, good. So, so, yeah. Anybody that's a fan of the show, you're you're in good company, really. Yeah. Because uh, brilliant. It's, <laughs> it's, like, it's it's I suppose really the show is just just so simple. It's just about how many different ways can someone fall off something, you know, into either mud yeah. or water, and it's a simple concept, but it works, doesn't it? It just 
course he does. Everyone yeah. likes to see everyone trip, trip and fall, don't they? Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of uh, speaking of that, I am curious. Of oh, this, this was uh, we were going to talk about this. This is obviously you on um, climbing up your place. Can you fill us in on this? Because let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so people can see. That is you dangling from this this helicopter. Yeah. Is yeah, that, it is. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Just fill us in on this. So this was this you being rescued, or was this doing a training exercise? Yeah. This, this is the rescuer being rescued, which I'm right. constantly reminded of by my friends. Right. But, uh, yeah. No. This, this is um, everyone goes through phases of what they're into in their lives through their yeah. lives. In this particular period of my life, my mountain rescue and my mountaineering was uh, was 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 the main thing. I like to go and climb mountains, mountaineering more than than, than climbing as such. Um, and this was in the Alps. Uh, I had this bit of a fascination to climb the Matterhorn uh, right. in Switzerland. You know, if, it, if people don't know what the Matterhorn is, I'm sure you just look it up and you see it. It's, it's classically the mountain that's described that if you gave a child a pen and a piece of paper and they just drew a, a mountain, they would draw the Matterhorn. Right, okay. Classic. Yeah, the one on the uh, the Toblerone bar. Anyway, I can relate um, to Toblerone. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Yes, it's, it's, it's but uh, notoriously sort of challenging and and difficult, and it's got a I think the highest kill rate of any mountain in the world, just through mainly its pop popularity and and the kind of nature of the terrain that it is. Right. There are more dangerous mountains in the world, yeah. K two and but yeah. in sheer numbers, the right. matter ones right. So um, the Matterhorn is quite a fickle mountain in that you've got to be, it's got to be in the right condition uh, yeah. for you to get up it and more importantly, get down it. It's actually harder to get down it. Right. So to cut a long story short, this is my third attempt over three years of, of, of getting to the summit of the Matterhorn. It just wasn't in condition on, on previous years. Yeah. This particular year, I mean, that picture looks really lovely, doesn't it? Nice, not yeah, a cloud in yeah, the sky. Blue that, skies. That's, yeah. the, that's the day after the night before. So right. um so anyway, we, we were on the mountain early in the season before the main stay of mountaineers were on there. So um, we set off uh, with a group of us um, and we got most of the way up to the top. The, the top bit was in uh, was in clouds. So um, okay. set off. You, you go up the night before staying in a mountain yeah. hut. Uh, we're in the, uh, the winter room because the main hut wasn't open. It's was a bit early season. Yeah. Set off two or three o'clock in the morning for the summit. Um, by about eight o'clock in the morning, we're not far off the summit. The summit's still in cloud, but right. we think it's going to burn off um, into cloud. Got to the summit, summited. There's two summits to it, the uh, the yeah. Swiss summit and the Italian summit. Right. And so by the time we got across there, then uh, the cloud started to burn off and it was lovely. Right. It was really nice, really warm. But then within seconds, the clouds closed straight back in on us and the world's worst storm just kicked off from nowhere hail snow hail and then the lightning strikes were just right. raining in at us and uh, again I've, I've i actually wrote a report on this when i when i got back to it's like a thirteen thousand word story on exactly this is right. document all my thoughts at the time because it was such a yeah. almost a life-changing experience for me yeah so if you can imagine you are stood on the top of a mountain mm. and now you've got to get down it the ridge in places is probably as wide as a coffee table you know, okay. and you've got a thousand metre drop either side of you. That, you know, that is you're covered in, scary. yeah, yeah, you're covered in metal, you got axes, you got crampons, yeah. and with the storm, everything you're holding that's metallic is now physically buzzing every time a lightning strike comes in. And every 20 seconds, I would say, right, probably underestimate, a lightning bolt would flash in at you and uh, strike the floor. I'm just thinking, if you're holding something metal, can that be a bit of a, a drawing? So, uh, can that be like a magnet to the, the lightning? Absolutely, that, that lightning is coming your way. You are like the easiest route for that lightning source to the oh, ground to earth. Wow. So, uh, a bit of a you know a hairy moment. But of course, you can't take the axes off. You can't take your crampons off because you need oh. it to get down. Well, yeah. Lad, I was tied to got hit by a ground strike. The lightning hit the, hit the ground. It threw him. His axe went down the face. Uh, so we had to down climb certain bits to get his axe back. Oh and then bearing in mind now we'd be going, it, we had to descend 400 meters to the emergency shelter that we knew was on the mountain. Right. It took us four hours to descend 400 meters. But in that period, the one lightning strike that nearly got me, yeah. was um, the axe that I had was buzzing away, mm. went from a low buzz to a high zing 
Right. Um, the only way I describe the next second is that if you imagine you were stood on the inside of a ping pong ball and you could feel right. the ball around you, I could okay. feel the air charge around me in an instant. And then uh, this lightning strike hit, and it's certainly no more than 10 feet away. It was like right in front of me and just like an arc welder on the floor. Oh and uh, yeah. that, that really, I, I just let out uncontrolled scream. Well, <laughs> I had no control. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we had to get ourselves off the ridge. We got off the ridge. We yeah. hid a little bit, let the storm go down a bit, move on a bit. Yeah. And um, again, eventually we got ourselves down to the emergency shelter. Yeah. The snow, the hail had built up so much. The Matterhorn now was even, you know, in such a dangerous state to descend mm. uh, that we were then benighted. The storm raged all day anyway, all right. into the next night. We actually managed to get a rescue out, uh, call out as an emergency phone in, the, in, in right. the shelter to the valley, of which we were told that they'll come and get you that night. The right. night, the day yeah. went, the night came, they couldn't come up, the weather was too bad. Yeah. So the next day, this picture here is the next day when they eventually got up to us. They were picking loads of other people caught out on other mountains. So they're literally flying around the valleys, Absolutely. picking people like up. Going from one person yeah. to the next, having to do loads of pickups, as it were. Absolutely. So they eventually came to us, yeah. lowered the winchman down to us. The guys are with you, right, God, you know what you're doing, you do this, yeah. you, you can go first. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> so they clip, clip me into the harness, into the onto the wind, and yeah. uh, winch me up the side of the hut over the roof of the hut and that pretty similar to what we do if you fall off you haven't got too far to go right. and then i was expected to be winched into the aircraft and then mm -hmm. carried on down but uh, as soon as i was winched over the hut the aircraft then just flew off the mountain as you can see there and there i'm dangling that's 10 down 10 000 feet above the valley floor dangling um oh, just... <laughs> winched me up I literally ended up being winched to the skids of the helicopter right. where I stayed. I put my arm around the, uh, the skid of the helicopter and they oh, put me that, all the way like down. The, is that the landing sort of feet, as it were, of the helicopter? Yeah, uh, underneath, right. yeah, as you can see on the picture there, and uh, yeah. hooked my arm over the skid there. Obviously, it's yeah. still connected to the to the wire, uh, the winch wire, and flew me off the mountain and dropped me off at the bottom. Yeah, and, that was, uh, and then went back yeah. up for the others. So, uh, yeah, quite the experience. You know, I'm just so, thinking, but, you know, when you were describing when you were up on the mountain, you were 400 metres away from the emergency point, uh, yeah. were you able to make any contact with any uh, rescue teams to say the situation you were in, or you had to get to that point before you could use the phone down there? I don't, did yeah. you have phones on your yeah, own? Yeah, no, you, you're on your own. Nobody's yeah. going to be coming up in those yeah. where, yeah. you know, you've got to get, you know, that's the whole point of, you know, serious mountains and the, the higher mountains, the Alps, you know, you, you've you got the skill sets to get yourself out of trouble. Right. Um, rescue services are there, but nobody's going to come up in that weather you just you know yeah. putting yourself into too much risk we could get ourselves off yeah it's just okay, managing that risk as best we could and it, yeah. uh, yeah. find knowing that we had to keep moving because we had to yeah. get out the storm uh but to just you know chancing our, our yeah. arm really you know, luck was on us that day that's for sure yeah oh that that is scary i mean the thing that's mm -hmm. amazed me is that when i've stayed with you before you've told me about some of the rescues that you've done on on snowdonia i mean there are some pretty Major, major examples. I'll tell you one that stood out to me. Maybe you can remind me. Wasn't there some guys that took a chessboard with them up up the side of one mountain, playing a game up there, and they forgot they spent too long up there, and then it went dark, and they couldn't get down or something. Was that? Was that one? Yeah, one? something like that. They went up onto the top of Krug Gorg to play a game of chess, and whatever. It got dark. Yeah. A bit uh, unsure as to how steep the ground was as they were descending it, so they thought to to, to check how steep it was. They'd throw their bag down. And uh, to see if it would roll down the hill, and of course it went bouncing down the mountain, and <sighs> along with all their kit and their head torches and everything. <laughs> no! Oh my god! Yeah. You know, oh it's uh, oh dear me. the things that go on. Uh, the particular mountain I cover is Snowden, or did do. I don't do uh, anything with it now, but right. uh, you know, I did 15 years or so with the team there, and in that time probably seven or eight hundred rescues uh, in that time on there the things that go on the main simple slip trips and falls but then yeah. you know a lot of serious incidents you know it's a bit of a honeypot mounting you know being snowden yeah. uh, that we get all people coming up in all sorts of weather conditions and all sorts of you know different uh, abilities to you know sometimes um, you know their intentions aren't uh, followed up with these sort of skills they need to you know, yeah. achieve what they need to do and uh, well, yeah unfortunately yeah, sorry, go on, go on. I guess, unfortunately, you know, quite a few serious incidents um, over the years. Yeah, no, because I remember when you first, uh, that picture we saw earlier of the uh, the ones from your show when you did the, uh, you know, the hike up Snowden that you arranged for everyone. 
I always remember what you were telling us about making sure you were in the correct footwear because they said, you said climbing up is one thing, but legs are so tired on the way back down, people are more in, inclined to break their ankles because you know, their legs go from under them. And if your feet aren't supported properly, there's more chance that you roll over and sprain your ankle or is that? Yeah, I, mean, I, I guess it's like with anything really, you know, if you're tired, you, you know, you're more hmm. prone to anything. But I think the main thing to take away from if anybody would take any advice away from, you know, yeah. going up the mountain that, you know, a bit of a cliche, but, you know, when you're at the top, you're only halfway there, you know, you've got to yeah. get yourself off the just look at my picture over there you know yeah. so the amount of banter i get for that but <laughs> uh, but you know you're going adequately prepared not only having the kit but knowing how to use it you know it, yeah. it's kind of common stuff really isn't it and having but, the kit and not throwing it off a cliff to see and not throwing yeah. it off to see how you're getting on sort of thing yeah you know you you, you make choices and decisions in your life and you've got to live yeah. with the consequences sometimes yes. and uh, yeah that's very true yeah yeah, so, um, no, because that, that's what I always found is that any time I've uh, spoken to you, I've never heard you repeat the same story twice because there's so many of them. It's, it's, it's like, it's oh, like you know, you could, write, you could write a book and people wouldn't yeah. believe half the stories, yeah. really, you know. Um, but uh, like I say, you know, you get the best part of sort of three quarters of a million people walking up the mountain every year and yeah. uh, you're going to get one or two incidents, aren't you? That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's it. Well, um, of course, uh, I, this was, it's all right, I, I picked this uh, picture out because you also have, and I know this is your own, this is your own dog, isn't it? Uh, that's your own one? Yeah, that's George. That's, oh, well, right. it's kind of my mum's dog, but uh, right. but my dog, my uh, my running mate, my best mate. Yeah. yeah. And it seems like he was like, nah, I'm not doing this today. <laughs> not not uh, getting bored, getting bored up in the snow. Yeah, I yeah. think you were thinking one of the search dogs, but uh, no, he's just, just a good old friendly dog that I do a lot of running with. So, yeah. Uh, yeah so uh no um i was actually what i was gonna do because we've uh let me let me come out of this a second because the thing i wanted to, uh let's see is it next one sorry about this this is the thing when you're trying to do things on the fly this is uh what happens the the thing we wanted to, to go to was the the bmx stuff because obviously on the show the two take home from it people knew that you uh you did mountain rescue and that you were world bmx champion so what years were you doing uh, BMX and how old were you at the time? I'm trying to think, was that like teenager or like late teens? Yeah, well, late, late teens really. I mean, when I, I won the World Championships, it was it was my age group World Championships that divided nice. into different age groups. So okay, uh, yeah. that was one, that was 1989 uh, when I won right. that. So it was the 17 plus category and I was, the, I was the overall world champion. So I did the ramps yeah. as you can see there and yeah. I also did the flat and stuff. So. It, that was in Paris in 1989. Managed oh, to do this, that. This so. is in Paris. This no, no. This this, this this picture here is in Alfreton in Derbyshire. Oh, okay, right. But yeah. The World Championships were in Paris uh, mm -hmm. that year. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was. Uh, in fact, this photo here is the day I got sponsored. Um, so I'd, I'd won the World Championships as a bit of a nobody right. really knew I was, uh, and yeah. then got offered a sponsorship deal for GT right. bikes. Yeah. Rode for them through to '92, basically, right. and then. Took up athletics and and joined the air force and you know the rest is history really. That's me. I got uh, just very quickly uh, on on athletics. Got to ask, did you run like four hundred meters and stuff like that? Or yeah, well, four hundred meters was my distance there. So uh, when I left BMX and <clears throat> tried to join the air force, they weren't too interested in in my BMXy stuff. Right. So they kind of went, you know, go away and do you know cricket, rugby, or whatever, and then right. come back and try join again so yeah. uh and to be fair I, I was coming kind of coming to the end of my my time without i had to sort of move on albeit that said some of my friends are still riding yeah now the x games jamie Besswick was a good old friend of mine who's right. winter gravity games x games and uh, yeah. he, he was my age group we, we, we rode together a lot yeah um so then uh yeah so i went away and, and got involved in other things and athletics came away 400 yeah. meters became a thing and uh I managed to win the the county championships there as a senior nice. at four hundred. Kind of, it was kind of just a what distance. What are you talking on the four hundred out of interest? So okay, right. This, this is a question. Um, yeah. Officially, yeah, fifty point fifty point three, and okay, that was in my second quick. season of yeah. doing it. Yeah, mm. and then I went through a, a winter of training, and I, I went under fifty seconds in, in a training set yeah. with with my coach there, and we were ready for the next race season. Yeah, um, so I was looking at probably 49 five ish i'm guessing yeah. Yeah. um and then but then i joined the air force 
and I never right. really got the chance to race again yeah, properly. Yeah, you did the training, there not on. a chance to exploit so, it and make it official. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to think I was a sub fifty second runner, but uh, officially I didn't quite get there yeah. the season before fifty point three, but it was there or thereabouts. So yeah. it's um, it's kind of just a distance that that suited me, and yeah. you know I only did that for a couple of years, and then yeah. that sort of sprinting is always you know, and that sort yeah. of fitness side of things has always stayed with me, and yeah, which so led me cool. into uh, a bit of Bob's playing as well because they used to choose the, the bobsleigh teams from the, the sprint squads yeah. uh, from within the military. And I had a, a little brief spell at that as well. So uh, I'm noticing a theme that you do things that are generally sort of terrifying. You're either sort of scaling <laughs> up mountains. I mean, if you look at, if people can see on this, let's zoom in on this photo, what you're doing, you're up, you're about eight to 10 foot above the, the top of the quarter pipe, arms up like this. Um, and you're doing that and then you're doing bobsleigh stuff where you're going like about what 50 60 mile an hour <laughs> yeah and a bit more uh, try, yeah. but uh, yeah it just seems that everything I've done in my life involves wearing a helmet and pads yeah you know? I want to start taking adrenaline, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, so yeah have you still got your trophy out of interest do you still have your trophies from from the BMX days I'm sure I saw them at your place once you know what? People are going to think this is all set up, but I thought generally you're going to ask yeah. that question. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one thing I have set up. There, there's my world. Cup. Yeah, awesome. my, okay, yeah. right. Let me. I'll tell you what. Let me uh, come off share screen so it'll be bigger. Hold on a second, and we're going to go to full screen. There, that's bigger. Right. Let's have a look. There we are. So brilliant. Uh, okay. uh, uh, lower it down a little bit. Yeah, I can read that. Champion du Monde yeah. freestyle France eighty nine. 89, yeah, awesome. so suitably, uh, you know, very understated trophy, but it, it means a lot to me, that does. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That, was, uh, that was a good win, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, I'm quite proud of that, to be honest. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, no, this is what I've been fascinated with, is that obviously, I mean, I got to know you through, through Wipeout, but then it was, um, you know, I saw you first on Wipeout and then got to meet you through the reunions. It's everything else you've done. I mean, literally, you could write a book with what you've uh, with what you've done. Effectively, you know, it's a uh, very, like to yeah, yeah, very very colourful career. I mean, I think in a way, what's what's kind of funny is that you've literally you've trained, uh, you you've helped train up royalty. I mean, technically, you've sort of worked with TV royalty in the shape of Amanda Byram, working with her because she's she's very very well known from the Big Breakfast days and everything. And then you've actually been working with the royal family as well, and you've been world BMX champion. I mean, the list just. Yeah. Yeah, I think you should write a book. <laughs> I'm sure my mum would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy it as well, okay? So we've got two sales straight away, okay? That's I'll have a word with mum and dad, see if they'll buy it as well. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. But, but it's um, really funny, though, because, you know, you, you chat about these stories to people and things and Prince William and bits and bobs like that, but yeah. it's not until you mention Wipeout, then that is it. That, that, that's yeah. all anybody ever wants to talk about is, is yeah. Wipeout, because everyone has so many questions about the show and what it was yeah. about, what it was like to do. And uh, yeah, so forget anything else, Wipeout's where, it, where it's at. So. Yeah, it, it, isn't it funny though? Because did you, did you ever find, if you were out with sort of friends, did you find that you're, if you're in a group of people that some of your friends say, oh, by the way, he, he did Wipeout. Did you did you ever get that sort of thing? A couple of no, times? anymore, uh, not really. No, no. I, although that said, um, just after the show aired, literally like the day after, yeah. we had a rescue up on Snowden. Right. And uh, I was mid-rescue with a stretcher carry Right. And some other random walker walking past recognised me because they obviously they mentioned Matt and rescue and stuff yeah. on the show. Yeah. And I had to stop, stop carrying the stretcher to get a photo with this guy, which I thought was quite funny. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, Z Z list celebrity. Yeah. Do you know what? Uh, do you know? Actually, you, you you summed it up because I know there were some people who did the show who thought they were going to be like an A list celebrity and like it's not that type of show. It's just you're watching a few people fall off things, have a bit of a laugh and. And that's yeah, it. And just awesome. joke about it yeah. with your with your mates. Um, what I found amazing is that for me it was just a, it was a fun talking point amongst my friends, and it'd be a bit of a conversation on a on a night out. But then suddenly, about ten years later, all the the youngsters who watched it who were like what eight, ten years old, they're now turning around about you know eighteen to twenty. They're getting all nostalgic about the show, and that's what's been the sudden interest in it again. And it's right, um, okay, yeah. and that's I what guess kind so. of. That's where the idea came for, for all of this because people have had so many questions about the show. So I thought, well, let's chat to like you. I spoke to Jackie, uh, you know, McQuiston last year. I'll try and leave it less than six months to do the next one now because there's been a bit of a delay. But uh, 
Well, I don't know. It's going to take it's going to take six months to to go through this. <laughs> I know. I, honestly, I, I honestly, do you know what? When I did the interview with Jackie, I I was thinking twenty thirty minutes we can cover everything, and it took an hour. And on this one, I don't know how long we'll be going for, but I think we're. Oh my goodness! Okay, we've been running for two hours. If anyone would still be watching after this, because I'm going to put this whole thing up on YouTube, and then I'll take clips out and I'll put that on, uh, you know, on Instagram. So no, no, this this is just going to go out as is. If, if anyone's so, still watching by this point, <laughs> congratulations. Exactly. So, Mum, if you're still watching, yeah, you know all this stuff anyway, so yeah. uh, stop watching it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, John, you're one of those people that if I was driving a car, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to stop and ask you directions. <laughs> <laughs> it would take too long, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, honestly, Brian, it's probably best we wrap it up on this now, because I, I honestly did not think we were going to uh, take two hours. Uh, I think it's been two hours. Um, yeah. I'm I'm actually flying. I'm going into work in uh, seven hours to go flying. Oh my <laughs> goodness! I'm so sorry. Right. Okay. I think we better we better call it a day on this now. So look, thanks oh. ever so much for taking part in this. It's been. I mean, God, I I've heard stuff from you that I've never heard before. Loads of little extra bits of info. So uh, you know, thank you. Uh, thank no, you. great. All right. It's been great to catch up, John. We've obviously yeah. not seen each other for a little while. So I know it's uh, been a few years. Yeah. So. Yeah, like I said, next time I'm in, uh, you know, I'm up sort of North Wales getting my car sorted, I'll uh, I'll pop in, I'll pop in, in. For I'll, I'll pop in and see yeah. you have a, have a little catch up. So, yeah, yeah, sounds Definitely. brilliant. OK, look, thanks ever so much for this. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you're going to help answer a few questions that, uh, you know, fans of the show have had, uh, you know, online. So uh, that's been brilliant. Uh, thank you. Brand, well, I hope it's I hope it's providing any sort of useful information to yeah. anyone, me just blithering on about stuff. So, uh, yeah, you're most welcome, John. So uh, oh, great excellent. to catch up. All right, cheers. Thank you. Uh...